Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm so grateful that you are enjoying this free content on YouTube. But don't forget to press B with me, and let's let whatever gonna be just be. The B-Side app is waiting for you to come home. Peace. Please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on they feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Pressing B daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the sewer man yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be So if you haven't downloaded the B-Side app First of all, what are you doing? Um, to all of my B-Siders, stand up, sit down Move around, give a pound Whatever you want to do I love you guys, I appreciate your support um, the B-Side app is where you want to be for um, all of our exclusive content, uh, for um, exclusive drops on everything that we're going to be doing. We tell the B-Siders first. And so if you wind up finding out about something later and then it's sold out, that ain't got nothing to do with us. That's on you because you not you didn't, you didn't download the app. What are you doing? Uh, but for everybody that has, I love you guys and thank you for your support. Listen, um... Man, I just need to take a moment and marinate real quick because I'm just happy to be back. It's been a minute. And um, what are, what are y'all doing? Like, what are y'all doing? What did y'all do? Because I was asleep. Okay, first I was asleep. Then when I woke up, I um, played video games. And then I ate some comfort food. If you want to know what to do, like when you're on a sabbatical, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help somebody figure it out. What you don't do on a sabbatical is stuff that you couldn't do because you was working, right? Like some people think, oh, when I take my sabbatical, I'm going to catch up on all the stuff that I didn't get to do because I was too busy doing something else. Nah, fam, that's not a sabbatical. That's just about to go work on some other stuff. I got three books I can catch up on now. I ain't catching up on no books. I didn't read one book in seven days, huh? I didn't read a book. Huh? I I didn't watch my diet. Huh? I didn't I didn't write in a prayer journal. Huh? Amen. Did not do that. I did not uh pull out my highlighters and my pens and go into a deep dive into the theology and eschatology of revelations. And is this is this eclipse going to also give us a sign into when the King of Kings is coming back? Huh? Didn't do that. Huh? I ate good food. Aye. Huh? I drank good drink. Oh. Huh? I chilled with my wife because she's fine. And um, I slept till my eyes popped open. And I shot people in the face. Oh. On my video game. <laughs> I just want to be clear. So we can clarify. On the on the on the because I'm not catching the case for the people I shot in the face. Hey. Although they probably want me to catch a face, uh, catch a case. In this race. For who I shot in the face. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, and, and then my phone was essentially a brick. And so if I left you on red and you have my phone number, um, I, I've probably responded to you by now to let you know that I'm not dead. Um, but, and also like when, when I don't answer my phone, please don't think that my social media activity means that, um, I, I also got my phone in my hand. Mm. I have a whole team that runs my social media. Amen. So if y'all think like, oh, he just posted. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me text him real quick. <laughs> <A little FaceTime. laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't even me. 
you got to call Juliana because it wasn't even me. <laughs> oh, so, um, yo, I'm 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 excited now. I'm going to tell you all this live is going this live is oh, I don't know how this live is going to go because um, I can't even call him my guest. He ain't, he ain't my guest. He your guest. This is my friend. It's your guest, though. <laughs> like, he he, he going to be a guest in the basement. But, like, like he's my friend. And um, uh, how, how do I even introduce you? What, like, what do, I, what do you want me to say? Like, young Savage. Yeah, yeah, young Savage? They might think they might think I'm on with a rapper. I don't I don't think I should introduce well, him. Well, my, a... my Espanol rap album is about to drop. You have an Espanol rap album? See. Si. Oh man, I'm a um, I'm gonna be busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be busy. I'm gonna be busy the day that your rap album drops, and I'm gonna be busy on the days I should listen to it. I'm gonna be also busy on those days. I don't even know. Acupado. <laughs> Yeah, ocupado, yeah. Oh, very good. Ocupado. Amen, brother. This accent is. <laughs> I'm here. Nah, you. Aki. Yeah. Aki. <laughs> Estoy aquí. I just like to say here. <laughs> Listen, all of, all of Travis's, all of, Tra all of Travis's track. Titles <laughs> is this gonna be one word Spanish? <laughs> Aquí, I <laughs> see. Yes. <laughs> it's happening. Eso. It's, it's happening. Este. <laughs> yes. I mean, see. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I'm weak. Somebody said your sermon yesterday was absolutely amazing. Oh man. Um. Okay, first of all, let me let me let me let me formally introduce to some and present to others. If y'all haven't heard uh tra of Travis Green, um it's possible, but I'm gonna say how have you not? Um he is a, a gifted singer, songwriter, worship leader, pastor. Um, he's a better friend, husband, father, um, and I'm just grateful that you in the house, man, chilling with me. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the proper introduction, mm -hmm. bucket list, I want to present to some and introduce to others. Travis Green is in the building, oh! ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Bucket list. Let's go. Baby, baby. What? <laughs> Did you just pull out the glasses? I pulled them out. We're here. You are? <laughs> I got a lot of surprises today. You got a lot of surprises today? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a takeover. You brought me a carrot cake? I brought you a carrot cake. From a store? I brought you a carrot cake because it was you and your dad's favorite cake. It was, bro. Thank you so much. I brought you a carrot cake. Bro, you whipped out the glasses and gave me a cake and like... Boom. Five seconds. Oh, it is gonna keep coming the is whole it, the whole day. The, <laughs> the whole day surprises. Is this is like an Oprah? How do you say surprises in Spanish? <laughs> oh my God, that Duolingo ain't helping you at all. Surprises. Uh, man, the way you say anything <laughs> is way different. Amen. Uh, uh, ¿Cómo se dice surprise? Sorpresas. 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 Yeah. Sorpresa. Sí, muy bien. Sorpresas. Sorpre <laughs> Bro, it's it's this. <laughs> It's this hand that's sending me, bro. I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna bind your hands so, behind your back because this so, this is not so, it, bro. So, this so, is so precious. So brought you a carrot cake. Oh, I appreciate you. The book is popping, by the way. Thank you. I love it, man. I'm in it. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Been um from the very beginning. You come out swinging. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, bro. I yeah. appreciate you. I, I felt dumb because I didn't know that's what the basement meant until I got into the book. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't. They just think it was like a cool yeah. name, and nah, that was a vision that the Lord gave yeah, me. Yeah, that's and crazy. Yeah, it, I've lived my life off of that. Yeah, off of that vision, bro. That's strong. Yeah, that's strong. So that, and that's all we trying to do with everybody is live that basement life. Press B, go down. We ain't trying to go up. Ain't, yeah, ain't no need to get to the top floor because yeah. Diddy's up there. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you went straight to it too. So you was like, it? they had their shirts off and it was standing there. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So what he, book? He, what <laughs> book have I read? What, well, what? Dude, I'm, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because there's so many people that don't think that a dream from the Lord or yeah. open vision could include women in bikinis and dudes in speedos. Yeah. But first of all, there's nothing wrong with a bikini and there's nothing wrong with a speedo. Yeah. We just lived in such a sexualized culture. Yeah. Um, but it does represent temptation. Well, speedos is a little inappropriate. Is it? For the beach? Well, I mean, yeah. I don't want to see you in a speedo. Okay. I make your request known unto God and man. I, 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 okay. I mean, I don't think I wanted you to see me in one. Yeah. Would you wear one though? No. Like on a private beach with no. Jackie? No. Okay. Okay. I would okay, wear a Speedo. Bro. Okay. That's... You would wear a Speedo? Absolutely. It just looks uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If Jew wanted me in it, I, I'd wear it. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because it's coming off. What color? It's coming off. Uh, <laughs> you put it on to take it off. Yellow would look good. I oh, mean, Hulk Hogan wore yellow. <laughs> yeah, bro. It, it was a shirt he ripped off. His Speedo was a shirt? Wait, I'm lost. No, he wore a Speedo. He wore. He ripped the tank he, top off. No, no, he ripped his tank top off, but he wore, um, yeah, he wore like the little wrestling shorts. Oh, yeah. That's not the same as Speedo's. I thought he wore those yellow underwear. Oh, no, yeah, I know. He had the, the, what you're talking about, the little shorts. He didn't have a thong on or nothing. Oh, a Speedo is a thong. No, it's not. Not mixing it. No, I, a I Speedo not... are the, are the, what okay. are we talking about? Hey, dog, we were talking about the book. Oh, oh, that's and, where we were. And we were in the vision, <laughs> and I did not know. And then we got the whole Hulk Hogan <laughs> and you and Yellow Speedo. Listen, Miss Tia said, I'm deceased. <laughs> Miss Tia is gone. She is done. <laughs> We are done. <laughs> this is over with. But 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 the um the book is amazing. Thank you. And that vision and those people are are part of the are part of that vision. And the, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, why are the bikinis and speedos? And it's like, well, yeah. Well, that's what happens when, when you're in a in, in an atmosphere where there is lust and lasciviousness yeah. and indulgence and I, I just think overall i even think of the, uh, i don't want to get too far into this but like with, with christian movies yeah like they they don't it it's just hard for me like i'm cool with the message like yeah you know what i mean but like i'd be like yeah this ain't no like everyday life yeah like the the main when the main actress and actresses can't even kiss yeah because you know what I mean? It's like, well, my, my real husband <laughs> and my real wife. And so they would just your like, wife Would your wife let you be in a movie and kiss another woman? Um, I would not be in another movie that required me to kiss another woman. Like, I wouldn't even be in the movie. But mm. if the, so, so if the role, but if the role. No amount of money. No. Okay. I'll just ask. Yeah, I don't want to kiss nobody. I don't, I don't even want to I mean, not act about to kiss wanting to do it, but. I mean, if it could help Noah be able to get a private jet. No, I I, I want to play the role where I just kill people. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't need to kiss anybody. I just let me put C4 to the door, yeah. no beef, no more. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't do it. It wouldn't even be an option. My wife would just be like, yeah, what are we talking about? Yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. But I think there's other ways to get the bag in Hollywood without... Yeah. Doing that, but it, but if the role requires that, then do that. Yeah. I'm, and I ain't, I ain't talking about like no tongue down the throat stuff, <laughs> but 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 like in in the, in the Christian movies, they be trying they be trying to deal with real life issues in a G rated way. Yeah, and I just I just be like I can't watch this because I don't counsel people like this. Yeah, the people I'm counseling don't don't act like this. They, they life ain't G rated. Yeah, that's true. What they just walked in that door talking about ain't G rated. Yeah, so that's my. That's that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. The book is amazing. Thank you, man. It really is. And uh, you did a great job. Even, you know, I love, it just came out the bat. Like, boom, let me tell you what the basement is. Yeah. And then um, just, I love how it's intertwined with Revelation and your personal story. It's just great. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank it's you. authentic. It's you. Thank you. I, well, I'm yeah. glad that came through, man. I, I I would hate for somebody to read it and be like, this 
No, no. Who, who wrote this for him? No, no, it's great. This is trash. It feels like you. Thank I you. I love that you did the audio book. I had to. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Was that not the hardest thing you've ever done? It was easy. Oh, my God. I just did mine. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my what, life. What made it hard? Well, because I, I haven't read out loud in, since I was 12. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, other than just the verse right before I preached. <laughs> so reading the whole book out loud, I didn't know how many words I didn't know how to pronounce. Cupboard. I when I got there, I was like I was like cup cup hoard. Cup I haven't I had to say Indian in the cupboard to be able to pronounce it. <laughs> I, said, I haven't I haven't said this word out loud since nineteen ninety six. Dude, this you know, you just write and read up. words that you don't say. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Okay. So how long did it take you to read it? Oh, my God. The book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was three of your, them. Bro, your book. My book. Not, not War and Peace. My, <laughs> like, like, your own book. How, do, how, how long did it take you to read your own book? <laughs> In English, in English, in English, <laughs> not in Espanol. Yes. It took me three of the longest days of my life. I hated everybody. <laughs> Man, I was miserable. My butt was hurting from sitting down so long. My back was hurting. Did you do did you do eight hour days on all of them? Uh I was late a couple of the days, so and then they punished me by not letting me do lunch. I was like, is it an hour lunch? So it was like 10 minutes. So <laughs> you were I'm you weak. Were, you were definitely an hour late this morning. <laughs> and still want an hour lunch. Okay, so, you should have ate so on I'll that see, hour you were late. So I see you guys back. So I see you guys back in that hour. No, sir. <laughs> you get a 10 minute lunch. You get 10 minutes, dude. You and, it's, it, and it's a smoothie. You voice it out whole it's morning. A, it's a smoothie king. We don't want to hear yamminess. We don't want to hear leftover bread in your mouth. Yamming up the oh, word. It was hard, cupboard. man. <laughs> Covered. I was like, oh, God, man. All right. So, so, um, and I, I and I wanted it to be full of like personality too, which like yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. For so sure. I wanted that. But yeah. Just, but you know, you gotta get every word right. It's true. You gotta get every word right. So, so you now, can't say there instead of the. You know. No, and all it has of that. to be right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. So I'm. I don't even. I don't even know if I want to tell you my process now. Cause I don't want it to feel weird. You just knocked it out. But we're friends, so, um, so I did mine in a day, um, and, uh, and, and then I had to come back like five weeks later for the cleanup. Yeah. Uh, because a publisher goes through. Yeah, they through. just sent me that cleanup email. Yeah. So, so I only had to clean up two words. I was there for like nine minutes. <sighs> Hmm. But I can't sing, so. But you can read. <laughs> Boy, I almost spit this. <laughs> almost spit this green tea <laughs> out. You can read. I <laughs> I thought I could read. It's bad, man. It was bad, what and I'm goodness. educated. That's what made it even worse. What 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 is um. So so tell me about twelve. Twelve. Yeah, you 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 haven't read out loud since you were twelve. What happened? <clears throat> I hear everything. Um, I just read to myself. I read to my boys, and even when I read scriptures, like in in church, mm -hmm. I get like I'll just skip over words. Like you know, like I don't read. Um, like if I'm reading this right, the mm -hmm. Starbucks cup, mm -hmm. I'm gonna read what I want to read. <laughs> oh, you can't do that with the Bible. Yeah. No. Yeah, like I paraphrase. So instead of saying, like free coffee, I'd be like, don't you like free coffee? <laughs> no, you just, that didn't even paraphrase. You just added words. I'm not sure. You'll, you'll, you, really, you'll really love our app. It doesn't say that. It says you'll love our app. So that's how I read. I read whatever my mind want to see. I thought that was normal. Okay. That's a, that, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. I mean, if you want that to be. Yeah. But I don't read out loud. But why? Um what happened? <laughs> I want to know what happened. I hear I hear something in there. I want to know. All right. You were 12 
and you stop reading out loud. And that was not like a 12-year-old decision that you came to by yourself. What happened? <laughs> Nothing happened. I, I just, that's the last time I can remember in a classroom, just like, your turn. I'm reading like Macbeth or something. Well, Macbeth. I mean, that language for a 12-year-old is a little, <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. I that's just, too much. I don't remember. It was difficult. It was difficult. It took me three days, man. It, it it kicked my tail. Yo, it's di- it's it's. That I can't process- believe you did it in one day. I'm so I can't impressed. Either. No, actually, I can't either. Like I just, it just you're probably the only person who's ever done that. I don't know, but it, it was it, it was. Um, or maybe the publisher was just trying to make me feel good. It was like everyone takes a long time. You're doing great. They literally told me that. They're the same people who work with you, by the way. <laughs> We're signed to the same <laughs> the same people. And I was like, yeah, we just did, Tim. You're doing great. Everyone takes a long time. They lied to me. You know what? This is some bull. They literally, now that I'm thinking about it, they literally told me. They lied to this, your whole they're face. They're like, this is normal. <laughs> we just did, Tim. It's great. Everyone takes a long time. You're doing great. They knew I wasn't doing great. I'm the worst client they have in the entire building. Bro, and they knew it. It's it's different for everybody. I will say that it is absolutely different for everybody. I you got to remember, I rapped. I, I, Me too. I I'm, I'm used to studio sessions. I rap. So, do, do you really? No, I had one rap album. My wife didn't support it. Back Let me tell you something. If y'all could see this thumbs down Jackie had <laughs> off this camera, though, <laughs> the moment I said I the word rap. <laughs> I looked to I don't know my if she right didn't and like it, it was already down. I don't know if she didn't like the album or if we were just, uh, we were uh, having one of our off seasons at the time. So this is early on. This is I, Her no seemed to imply that it had nothing to do with an off season. <laughs> she was like, I was actually more deeply in love with you than I've ever been before. And that's why I told you the truth, because I loved you. <laughs> hey, bro. So, um. Oh. I'm so grateful to have you here. And because this is on our live, I just want to vibe with whatever you want to vibe with. For sure. Like, I just want to talk about whatever you want to get into. So, for what, sure. what would that be? <clears throat> Man, listen. I, um, I think the thing that I'm on now is longevity. Right? Like, I just want to last. Like, I'm not even trying to be, I think, the greatest. I just want to have, like, of course I have. I want to be optimal. I'm doing all the things to make sure that's in check. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably at my healthiest place, Good. emotionally, physically, um, spiritually, kind of firing in, um, on all cylinders. Marriage tight, kids great, church is doing well. Uh, all those things, but... I just I'm I'm around and when I get around wisdom, I wanna know, man, how to last. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. We see so many people start off strong and I'm older than a lot of people think I am. And just in Me terms too. of even minutes <laughs> and just even in terms of ministry years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like sure. I've been like people like, Oh, he's a new kid on the block. Like, nah. Nah. I've been, you know, around, I've been in the back wrestling lions and bears long before you saw me with giants. So, yeah, for sure. Um but even in that, like, I just, man, I want to last. I see so many people fall off, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's probably my loudest thing in my spirit that I'm after. Like, man, how do <clears throat> me, me finding out those cheat codes and then me sharing them also? Yeah, like, for sure. man, how, like, when I see these young guys or older guys, whoever, yeah. you know, um, who are just in love with God, who are hot, you mm-hmm. know, like, Man, I don't want you to. I just don't want it to fall apart. Yeah, it ain't, for sure. It ain't no five minutes worth you losing everything, you know. Or for me, it would be way less. But it's not worth you, worth you losing your whole life, you know. So. I I I um. <laughs> I I'm. This is. I'm glad you brought this up. Because um. <clears throat> I have said for years that um, <laughs> My wife er, er, early early success, uh, if not stewarded properly, will just leave you with a highlight reel. Mm. Dang. And um, we know a lot of people that just got a highlight reel. Yeah. 
here's what I used to do, here's where I used to go, mm. and here's the clip to prove it. Mm. Right? And it's like, um, right, I, I'm, I, I love basketball. Me too, big time. So, so there's a lot of um, high school players and college players that can put together like a 60-second sizzle reel mm -hmm. of assists and dunks and three-pointers, yeah. right? But then you pan the camera back to the whole high school career or basketball career, college career, and it's like they average 4.8 points and two rebounds. <laughs> but that highlight reel was crazy. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And it's like, for us and what we do, I don't want to pull back the camera and it's like, your wife don't like you. Yeah. Your kids don't respect you. Yeah. Uh, your ministry is shoddy. Yeah. You know, your money's funny. Yeah. You know, um, and you, you go to bed at night praying that five people don't open their mouth. Dang. And say something. Yeah. Or honor they non-disclosure agreement man or you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like that i don't want i just don't want to live like that <laughs> nah, that's that not ain't fun. my life I, I ain't trying to do that that's not fun so that all of that is um but but that has to be conscious though mm. so what at this season of your life now especially after being in ministry so, so many years what is it about this season that prompted that thought what are you what have you been looking at that makes you just that made you conclude, I just want to last. Man, I'm, I mean, the great falling away, you know what I mean? I got tons of friends, as do you, who we saw win. Yep. And, you know, not last. Yep. Or, or barely holding on. Yep. Or, man, that <clears throat> some 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 who are my heroes. Yeah, You know sure. what I mean? That, Absolutely. Like, I, I'm a... I ain't a street kid. I'm a church kid yep. through and through. Yep. Like, this is all I know. Yep. But like, I'm a church boy. Yep. I am all things church. Yep. I don't have secular references. Yep. That they're, I grew up in a holiness household. Yep. And what they call everything other than gospel, the blues. The closest yep. I came to secular was BB and CC. Got you. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So, like, Michael Jackson for the only girl else. crush I could have was Dorinda Clark. <laughs> She was the finest Clark sister. That's the only chick I could. I couldn't have Janet Jackson on the wall. So I just folded up that picture of the Clark sisters to it was only Dorinda. <laughs> I love you, Dorinda. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so... So for me, what Michael Jackson is to everybody, <laughs> that folded up has killed me, man. I can't get it. Like, I see it. Four of them. I see it folded, and that is crazy. Yeah, it's, you got to fold oh, it up to man. get to Dorinda. Man, folding out Twinkie is, is crazy, <laughs> man. That's that's messed up. That, um, and Karen. Man, yeah, that's crazy, man. Um, uh, <laughs> you don't even know what to <laughs> So Michael Jackson, for everybody else, was, uh, you know, that John P. Kidd is my Michael Jackson. Oh, my goodness. He's my king of pop. Like, that is, John P. Kidd is everything to me. Hey, bro. So, you know what I mean? Like, I know. I got nine albums memorized. I'm saying, colorblind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, absolutely. If you know, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, for absolutely. me, show up. You know, that is show my. Show up. That's absolutely. my. And anybody who knows me know that about me. Yep. Like John is like at the top of my. Wow. Oh, my this is gosh. good to know. Oh man. Like I mean, man, man. How yeah. people were passed out over Mike. I'm like that with John. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that's my guy. So wow. So just Yo, to give you I, context, we still listen to uh, Nathan. Is Nathan? Is no over there too? Or is it just you? He crawled away. <laughs> we we still rock John P. That's what I'm saying, yeah, man. Bro. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Wow. So like. Wow. Yeah. So my f just for context, like that's my world. Yeah. So like, you know, the I, I'm from the days of like watching TBN, and from the days of like that was high school for me. You mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. And so, 
For me, church was everything. It was always everything. You yep. know, I strayed away a little bit in college. Yeah. Played as a frat, partied a little bit. And then, you know, came back <clears throat> to God and, and really locked in. I've been locked in for, you know, a couple decades. So, like, for me, this is my this is my world. Yep. And so I say all that to say when I have heroes, people who I've admired. Like, for me, I did, it wasn't it wasn't that and this. It was only this. Understood. So, for me, everything sacred for me is like yeah for like sure we're talking double triple honor like, yeah for sure so to see any of that get messed with or see people don't last and people who have made an imprint on my life you know i don't know what all goes into that i don't know if there's like a psychological thing that that has something to do with that as well because my dad died mm -hmm. when he was 28 i was five he Sorry. died of an aneurysm yeah on a sunday morning and so for me, male influences have always been a big deal too. So I don't know if it has something to do with that too. Yeah. Um, but so I think maybe that all of those things together, seeing people like I'm, I don't respond to scandals like everyone else does. Yeah. Like people get a kick out of that and like yeah. make posts about that. Like it's heartbreaking to me because I feel for like for sure I'm like man, these are like yeah, you know, like yeah, this, yeah, 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 these yeah, yeah. are my heroes. Yeah, we talk about yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. Like, for sure, these people I wouldn't even. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I'm at, yeah. you know, without their influence. So anyway, um, I think all of that for me, um, you know, ha has played a part in me being like, you know what, I don't want to end up like that. Yeah. And there has to be another way. Yeah, for There sure. has to be a way to love God and not be so devoted to church that my kids hate God. Yeah. And not be so devoted to the road that my marriage struggles yeah, yeah. i'm not so for me it's like balance and figuring that out even in i i guess you would call my prime dude so um i'm glad you uh, i was thinking about this this morning juliet uh cut me up uh because she's my barber so she oh, wow. faded me up this morning it's amazing and then um i was in the shower and i was literally thinking about scandals because mm. i all i do is run conversations in my head with yeah. everybody yeah. in the world yeah. like in a, just in case i talk to them you know what yeah. i mean and i was thinking about um specifically the scandals and two and obviously i have a biblical reference for everything sure so the two people that came to my mind were joseph mm -hmm. and jesus mm. okay joseph's scandal was produced by a lie mm. The man even went to jail mm. for two years mm. off of a lie. Now, was he complicit in some way? <laughs> he was. Mm. Because scripture is clear that on a day when no other servants were in the house, mm. Joseph went in to do his administrative duties, knowing that that a woman was making sexual advances at him every single day. Mm. But the, all the days that these sexual advances were coming, there were always other people in the house. And because there were other people in the house, the temptation could only taunt him. Mm. On the day no one was in the house, the temptation took him. Mm. It grabbed him. Mm. So what's the difference? The difference is accountability. <sighs> Well, the only thing your, content, well, your temptation can do when you have accountability is taunt you. Mm. But what can happen to you when you have zero accountability is your temptation can take you. That's the word. And that's what happened. So even though, yeah, no, he didn't do nothing with Potiphar's wife, but he shouldn't have been in the house Woo. alone with his temptation. Yeah. Thinking he was strong enough. Yeah. To be able to. Yeah. I, I, I can handle this. Yeah. Not, not, none of us can handle our temptation yeah. on our own. Yeah. And it's prideful to think so. Yeah. Right? Very, very. So that, that, puts him, that puts him in prison. And in our culture, we would write Joseph off. Mm -hmm. You hear what happened to Joseph? Right. Yeah, he, he did something with Potiphar's wife. Right. I mean, no, ain't nobody going to prison unless it's true. Right, right, right. right. And then he winds up second in command to Pharaoh. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to let stuff play out. Man. Right? Yeah. That's numero uno. Jesus is absolutely scandalized and trumped up charges 
And it leads to his death. Yeah, he's out of here. And he's completely resurrected three days later. Yeah. With all power yeah. in his hands. So it's just making me reconsider scandals mm. altogether. Mm. And 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 being patient enough to just wait. Let's just wait until everything comes out. Play out. Because it's gonna come out. Yeah. Eventually. It's gonna absolutely come out. So whatever you read and whatever you heard, whatever, whatever, if it's true, we gonna know. Yeah. And and if it's false, we gonna know. But you can't be coming up with a whole scenario. And this is the thing about our culture is we live in a will of fortune culture because mm. this is a, this is a human behavior mm. that will not change. Tell me why the will of fortune is still on TV. There's only one reason. Vanilla White. Did you say Vanilla White? What's her name? Jackie, is he like this all the time? Vanna White. Jeez. She went, she went to high school with my parents. And she's brunette. Travis, I don't understand. And I think the most amazing thing about your revelation that you got it after getting a haircut in the shower, it would have taken me hours of prayer to get what you just said that fast. Travis, real quick, what do you want for lunch? You want a steak burrito, chicken burrito? I don't eat beef or pork. I'm okay. safe. What would you like, boss? Um, chicken. Chicken? You want yeah. a bowl or burrito, Papa? Uh, my wife said I want chicken tacos. You want chicken tacos? Whatever she says. Let me tell you, that statement, you that I just got a glimpse of you as a grandpa. <laughs> like, I literally just got a glimpse of you being 75 years old. <laughs> My wife said, I want the chicken tacos. <laughs> <laughs> ba baby, what do I eat on Thursday? <laughs> Honey, you always eat the chicken tacos. On the My wife said, I want the chicken tacos. Oh, I guess I'm getting the chicken tacos. <laughs> Nigga, I'm dead. When I tell you I'm dead off that, I'm weak. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, Will of Fortune. There's only first of all, calling her vanilla white <laughs> is when I tell you there's so there's already so many things I'm not gonna be able to get past. Yo, Spanish is one. And then this vanilla white has has sent me into an outer space realm. <laughs> Bruh, William Fortune is still on TV to this day because no one can resist trying to fill in the blanks. Mm. No one. Mm. If you flicking past Will of Fortune. Yeah. You're going to try to solve the puzzle. So true. Because w we, we're not even patient enough to wait till Vanna flips all them letters over. Yeah. It's fudge. <laughs> That's true. We saw a U, a D, and a G. Yeah. Fudge. That's all we need. Right? Yeah. And, and, and that is human behavior. We mm. got to have an enemy. Mm. We got to have somebody to blame. Mm. We got to have resolution. Mm. What happens when there's no resolution? What, what happens when the evidence mm. is out, not out yet? We're going to make it up. Mm. I think I know what it was. Yep. That's so true. I think I know what he did. Yep. And we start filling in the blanks before we have evidence. See, I was going to be a homicide detective. My mother worked for the LAPD for 30 years. Yeah. So, so the, the way I was trained even prior to, to even taking the test to get into the academy, is you, which is why I'm such an, a sequential person. Yeah. Because you cannot hand a bunch of evidence to the DA that is circumstantial. Mm. If it has a bunch of holes in it, it's not going to be yeah. something that the DA can prosecute. Yeah. The DA is not trying to take something to trial that they can't win. Yeah. So if you don't have all the evidence prior to, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And we got people around these scandals that are like, oh, I already know what that is. Yeah. Secondhand, thirdhand information, <clears throat> circumstantial stuff. Yeah. He looked at me funny one day. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say hi to me in the parking lot. Yeah. I saw him at a restaurant once. Yeah. He had a glass of wine. Yeah. You know what that means. Yeah. No, I don't. What does it mean? Yeah. It means he likes wine. Yeah, that's all it means. What does it mean? Yeah. So, um... Yeah, those scandals are, some of these scandals, you just got to wait. But for the ones that have, like, resulted in a fall, yeah, I can I can rock with the person still. 
Yeah. I don't have no reputation. Let me tell you what I don't like. I don't like when we distance ourselves from our friends. Right. Because they get caught up in something. Right. I don't do that. Yeah. The only people I don't mess with are people that can't acknowledge their sin. Yeah. It's the only people I can't mess with. Biblically, I can't mess with. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. But if you if you fail and you know it, yeah, you're you're still my friend for sure. And if you don't, and if some, the public don't like me because I still like you, yeah, you call yourself a sequential person. I don't know what sequential means. So sequential means it's probably in my book. It's probably one of the words that got me. I am, I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a word in my book. <laughs> Damn me. Sequential. Um. Uh. You know what? I'm going to do just like I do with Nathan My wife Noah. is so ashamed of me. No, she's, she's not. She's very smart. She loves you. I'm smart. She, huh? Yeah, always. Always. I always go to the definition. Sequence? Oh, it just means like, oh, you're just in order. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to break, break, break it down. There's a lot of the following dwellers one that didn't thing. know either. <laughs> I, I said it for them. I actually know what it means. The, 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 following, the following of one thing after another yeah. Order of succession, a continuous or, or connected series. So I, I need to, that's me. I need to connect me all the too. dots. I'm I never I mean that's my that's who I am now. Yeah. I'm gonna tell that to everybody. Yeah. You're, in you're, every conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Travis Green and I'm a sequential person. <laughs> I'm a sequential person. You gotta know that about me. I'm very sequential. Just to my core is who I am. Should I put the core? Should I put that in there? I that mess it up. No, core it's sequential to your core. If you, I mean, <laughs> to my core, I'm sequential, and it's just something I've always had. I've always been. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so what are you doing for longevity? Uh, Being something that this is something you're processing. How are you? <clears throat> how are you doing it? I'm asking people like you, um, and and those who I've I've just seen, uh, you know, last. I'm asking like, yep. yo, what what's up? Yeah. Like and um, I'm taking notes and um, I'm very blessed, man. I don't have um, other than my my father dying when I was young. I don't have a lot of trauma that I I had that I've had to work through. My mom Good. was extremely overprotective mm -hmm. and sheltered, and mm -hmm. I couldn't spend a night nowhere and just I see that. Yeah, so I grew up very in that type of environment, which I hated growing up. I thought I was strict, but now I look back like thank God. So um, you miss something. Yeah, I missed a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank God, man. And um, <clears throat> so, man, marriage is healthy. My wife and I, best friends, not just on Instagram, like in real life. Like we, we literally ride or die. Like that's my homie, homie, homie. Mm -hmm. um, so I, there's no I don't I don't think there's like any reason like, oh, let me beware, like type of thing. No. It's just more. I, I think it, it is. Honestly, the pain of seeing so many people constantly fall, and I'm like, all right, you know, take heed unless you fall. Like, I don't want to be prideful out here for sure because no one, no one, no one went up for the altar call and got anointed to be the prophet of the nations. And it was like, you know what? In 15 years, I'm gonna mess this oh, up. I'm gonna mess all of this. I'm gonna mess this up for the kingdom. I'm gonna have me a girl in every area code. <laughs> yeah, where I yeah, can yeah. See it now. No yep. one plans that. Nobody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I just, you know, don't want to be so prideful. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't. I don't. That, that the perversion is not like a, a strong temptation for me. Yeah. Um. So, but just anything. Again, I don't want to have. I don't want to be um, self righteous yeah, of thinking sure. that I can't trip. So no. it's just I, I want to. You know, I have accountability. I have barriers, but also just want to know the things to watch out for. One thing that a couple of people, very very influential people who have you know, I guess you know had had failures, told me. Um, uh, that everybody would know their names, but two of them told me the same thing. They said one of the things to be aware of is actually fatigue. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. They was like, yeah. They they was like, we we didn't. I didn't. You no, know, both of them told me this in two separate conversations. I didn't fall because of perversion. I felt because I was tired. So so, um, that yes, yeah, first of all, yes. <laughs> but what what is? Let's go to the root because yeah. fatigue ain't the root. Mm. Fatigue is fruit. Oh. The root is pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we get to there's a certain season yeah. in all of our ministries. Yeah. Um where the pace can pick up. Mm. And um, you know, I don't know about you, but I know in my twenty eight years, there's this season of obscurity. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows you. Yep. 
you're happy when two people want you to do a Bible study. <laughs> I got in a 76 Coupe de Ville and drove 25 miles to Randy's house. Yes, a, sir. a single woman with five kids. Yes, sir. Her and her friend was at her house and she called me to come over and do a Bible study for them. I drove 25 <laughs> miles in a 1976 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I floated down the oh Cajon Pass on Interstate 15. I got to their house. They sat on one side of the coffee table on the couch. I stood up on the other side, and I taught my butt, butt off. Yes, I, sir. I was so honored yeah. and privileged. That, that was, like, a big deal to me. Yeah. And then you blink, and you're preaching in front of thousands. Yeah. And our thought is... God is opening these doors, mm -hmm. and so now I'm. I got to be everywhere. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. I ain't got to be everywhere. Yeah. And so you, if you don't learn to say no, so you can steward your pace. Yeah. That's what leads to fatigue. Mm. Is saying yes to everything. Yeah. And thinking that every door that's open is God. Yes, sir. Some of them doors that's opened is the devil. The devil. And some of them doors that are open are just good. Mm. It ain't even a devil. It's just good. Mm. Oh, it'd be good to do that conference. I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. I got Bible for it, too. You know I do. Of course. Um, so this is my this is the verse that my decline letter is built on. Because mm. um, <laughs> I be saying no in a heartbeat. Uh, let me see. Paulos. Um, Paul, Paul wrote this to the Corinthians about Apollos. This is first Corinthians, uh, 16. I, I found this verse again. Once I get a Bible verse, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> so, uh, that's how, uh, I'm, that's how I'm with a word. Yeah, Once yeah. I get a word sequential, you can't tell <laughs> me nothing. <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> All right, so this, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 12. <laughs> now, about our brother Apollos, mm. which at the time, Apollos is the coldest teacher. Mm -hmm. Out of Paul, Cephas, everybody, Apollos is the coldest. They mm. call him the silver-tongued orator. Wow. He's he's the he's the Thomas Dexter Jakes. Of, wow. He's the Billy Graham. He, yeah. he, he is the orator. He's the one. Of this time, okay? Now, about our brother Apollos... I urged him to visit you with the other believers, but he was not willing to go right now. Mm. He will see you later when he has the opportunity. Shh. When you, I love that. Apollos was invited by Paul? Saul? <laughs> the? The? the New Testament. The? <laughs> he is the New Testament. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't know this at the time, but he still has a lot of influence yeah. at the time. Paul urged him to come. That dude said, "No, I'm good." Wow, I'm 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 not I'm not willing. Wow, not even like the Holy Spirit said, "No, you know what? I prayed." <laughs> no, I'm just I'm I'm unwilling to go. <laughs> I've literally turned down engagements because I'm quite unwilling to go right wow. now. Wow, Juliet is cute. Wow, Nathan and Noah have things. Wow. And I'm not coming. Period. Period. It ain't even a thing. Yeah. Well, well, um, we've left our calendar open, and we want to plan the conference around you. I'm not coming. <laughs> the whole year, whenever you had it. I'm not coming. Winter, spring, summer, fall. I'm not going to be there. I don't want to be. I'm not coming. Oh, man. And, 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 it's, and it's okay. I love that. I love that. Why? Because I'm stewarding pace. Yeah. I don't need to be everywhere. Yeah, man. Everywhere ain't about money. Yeah. So I ain't, I ain't just turning down like, oh, you ain't paying me my honorary. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just not coming. No, I drive my team crazy about yeah, that. Yeah, you could triple the like, honorary. I didn't, I didn't tell you how much it was. It doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my admin, I had a conversation with my admin because I, 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 um, uh, I like to be efficient when I'm on those calls about my life and my yeah. world and Eunice runs my whole world. Yeah. And I told her, I said, Hey, um, we spend a considerable amount of time with you going through a list of requests and mm -hmm. invitations 
that I just say no to. Mm. So let me give you, um, let me give you a guidelines of things. Wow, that I'm never going to say yes to. Dang. And then once I give you this, don't ask. never ask me about this again. Man. Say no, and don't even tell me you said no. Wow. Like you don't even have to bring it on my radar. Yeah. Because it's not like I'm a chance. So yeah. just say no. Yeah. And so now she, there's a whole bunch of stuff that she just says no to. And then sometime when I'm out in the field, people will be like, hey, I invited you to come to the thing, but your ad man said you. I was like, mm. man. I'd be like, man, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Never heard about it. <laughs> Never even heard about it. <laughs> she said no. I didn't say no. Wow. She did. So it's about pace. Yeah. It, it, fatigue ain't the thing. Man. It's pace. Man. It's pace. Man. It's pace. It's not falling in love with the 45 minutes. Yeah. 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 I get it. That 45 minutes is not more important than this. Yeah. For real. You know what I'm saying? For real. Um, that's why I love the basement being in my home. Yeah. Because people get a glimpse. When people come here, they get a glimpse into my pace. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. you just really in your house. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, it's, it's a nice house, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Um, like, you just really in your house chilling. Yeah. Like, there's not this, so, bro, man, wish I had time to talk after this, but, yeah, like, we eating lunch after this. Yeah. And it's going to be a good lunch. Yeah. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I just think that um, we we have to model that for mm. the ones that are coming up. It's great. So that they can, thank you, Holy Spirit. We, what, let me use a better word. It's a word I use often. We have to demystify what ministry is. We, we got to take away this allure of like, oh my God. Yeah, it's popping out here. You, oh. You missing out. Y'all living the life. Yeah, yeah. It, it, oh my God. Yeah. I wish I could travel. Yeah. I wish I could be on the stage. The green room looks so fun. <laughs> we got to demystify all yeah. that. It's a green room. Yeah, it's just a room. It's a place we wait to go serve. Yeah, with water and pineapple. With water and pineapple juice that's if you're in America. That's it. With red wine if you're in Europe. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> with jalof if you're in Africa. Yeah, with jalof if you're in Africa, yeah, right? And a, and a local goat. Yeah, that's you, it. You know, it's it's we got to demystify it, man, because it's it's... This allure thing and this, yeah, we out here, we out here, yeah, Are we out here doing what, yeah, mm. pace. How how do we demystify it? Access. Mm. People need access and proximity. Whoa, we 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 can no longer be the these um, attractive, just out of reach people that don't have time to stop. While Jesus is calling niggas down from trees, saying he about to come eat at their house. Wow. Stop playing. Hector, do y'all hear how smart this guy is? Very smart. It's ridiculous. He don't even try. You don't have on any socks. Amen. <laughs> Toes up for Christ. Yeah, man. Just really. That, that That's it, though. That's what it is. It's like. All right. Well, all right. Let me ask you, man. Yeah. You've been in ministry forever. 28 years. Access comes with crazy and betrayal. And lies, and you give, give, give. They take, take, take. How did you remain clear in the midst of just because people don't know your whole story? They couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So how how do you still continue to give access? Continue to give opportunities? Continue to give? Oh, you could be around and not be like. Uh, any day now, your crazy gonna show up. Yeah, um, w when you when you give access to people, you you're gonna all, you always run the risk of being hurt. Yeah, right. Jesus chose twelve. Uh, we know very very expressly that one denied him, yeah. one betrayed him, and one doubted him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Off rip. Off rip. That's so, a quarter. So that's a quarter. Yeah. Right. Um, that's twenty five percent of your crew. Yeah, is is gonna deny you, betray you, doubt you. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, your your 
your outlook has to be this comes with the territory mm -hmm. because people got free will and they just because you give them access don't mean they know how to handle it. Yeah. So, but what I'm not going to do is take the behavior of a quarter of the people. Whoa. And generalize and apply it. Whoa. To the other nine. Wow. It's really good, man. Because I got a guy that's so beloved that he'll lay on my chest. Wow. I got somebody. And take care of my mama. And take care of my mama, dog. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got somebody on the squad that is going to be so theologically sound, my half-brother, that he yeah. he going to be out here yeah. leading the Jerusalem Council and, yeah. and helping take the gospel forward. Yeah. And so um, I, may, I may have been misunderstood for a season with him, but that's that's everybody that sees you up close. Whoa. Anybody that gets access to you up close, they're going to get a different side of you. Whoa. You the preacher and you the, on a regular basis, day to day, they're going to be like, oh. oh. And, and, and they need to see it. Yeah. I'm not going to hold that back from them. Yeah. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to give you the preacher side of me on a Tuesday at a coffee shop. Yeah. Or especially in my house. Yeah. That's what I ran into last year. Yeah. Last year was, oh my God, Tim. Yeah. Tim says nigga. Yeah. Tim uses strong language. Yeah. Yeah, in my house on my couch, I do. Yeah. And, and but the camera was on. The camera was on in my house. Yeah. While I was on my couch. Yeah. You, you, think, you think I'm going to sermonize a, a, on my couch? Yeah. No, I'm having a conversation. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's, it's when people see that side of you, they're going to change. They may change their response to you. Mm. And they may change their behavior. Mm. You got to let that quarter flesh out. You got to let that quarter flesh it's out. Because here's quarter. the thing. Because even in that quarter... 75% of that quarter came back. Yeah. Or, or let's put it a different way. Two-thirds of that yeah, yeah. came back. Yeah, I got you. The yeah. one that denied actually came back. Yeah. The one that doubted actually came back. Yeah. The one that betrayed did not come back. Yeah. So you can even win those back. Yeah. And they were but, willing to die for you. But you can't be petty. Mm. See, I, I, I let... Um, I, I've seen too many people in ministry <sighs> let 25% of what has happened to them, turn them into the most hateful, yeah. bitter, petty person. Every other sermon is about they haters. Yes. They still preach into the quarter, and they, no, and they no longer listen. Fam, that was my next question. This morning I woke up, and I was like, you know what? First of all, I don't know if you know this, you're one of my favorite preachers. Everybody, oh, thank you, everybody else knows that. You're thank on my you. Mount Rushmore. Thank you, You got bro. further. You're going to have Tim Ross up there. Thank and you, man. some others. Um, Thank you. So, no, for real. Like, I, if you're anywhere near where I'm at and you preaching, I'm in the audience with four pages of notes. And not just the theology, yeah. the presentation, the demonstration, the you, you tell a story better than any communicator in the world. Thank you. The man. way you bring the Bible to relevance. So, if you watch me preach, you'd be like, yeah, that, that's probably, he got that from me. <laughs> just be proud. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love it, man. Thank um, you. That's that's dope. no, no, that's dope. for for sure, for sure. You you are a ridiculous preacher. I know the dwellers know Couch Tim. Those of us who know. Hey, everybody. Um, we got eclipsed, and now we're back. The the whole the we just lost power for like a second, and now we're back. And Travis uh, took the opportunity uh, to go to the, to go pee. People are really gonna think the world's ending now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. It's all good. It's all good. Um, Thank you, Noah. Yeah. So, uh, and the people, the people want the pin drop. They were like, "Last we heard was uh, uh, in, I in any room, in yeah, any I know room." Where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, guys. That guy's like, "I'm, I'm a professional talker." I'm, I'm good, guys. I know where I know where we are. Uh, uh, first, before I even jump back in that, let me just say. The way you fathered your son in that moment was super impressive. I got three boys, four, seven, and nine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been that calm. Mm. I'm just being honest. Yeah. I would have been like, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beat it, <Yeah>. pipsqueak. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Not quote, pipsqueak. unquote. <laughs> quote, unquote. <laughs> pipsqueak. Beat it, <laughs> pipsqueak. <laughs> it's exactly like... 
I know, like, uh, I say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. For so sure. I know that's what I would have yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Beat it, Pipsqueak. <laughs> like, you were like, it's okay, probably just watch a step. Yeah, like, for sure. What? Yeah. So just for just for context, Whoa. so everybody knows, uh, Noah just accidentally stepped on the, the power strip that uh with his big toe. And um uh yeah, it's your it's, demeanor didn't switch. You were you were this relaxed yeah. when it happened. You're like, we lost everything. Cool, just watch yourself, young fella. Yeah. What? Yeah, so I so, couldn't even pee right. <laughs> I went to pee and I was like, what manner of man is this? <laughs> who, who fathers his son's like what oh I am goodness. a horrible father. <laughs> I would have that's you didn't budge, fam. <laughs> it's it's um what cause what what can be done? What what are we gonna do? I need that. What well, well okay, so so let's slow it down. Right, and, and we'll get back to what you were gonna say. Yeah, yeah, we're good, fam. But, I know exactly what we were. Yeah, yeah, but 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 let's slow it down. It wasn't done on purpose. Yeah. Um. Noah has been in this room with us for as long as I've been doing this. It's the first time that ever happened. This yeah. has never happened before. Yeah. Right, and so when our children make mistakes. Our responses are informing them yeah, as to how we are experiencing them in that moment. I mean, you just said you matter more than yeah. a podcast. Because he does. Well, I am, my mind is, I can go back to South Carolina. <laughs> I'm wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that well, before. Yeah. That much patience for a 13 year old. Yeah. Has wrecked me. Yeah, yeah. These are these are my boys. Wow. And there are days that that they have consequences. That but that's because they're intentionally, willfully yeah. disobeying, and then we have to deal with that a different way. Man, you but, you're the but, real deal, man. Like you're not just you ain't just a podcast host. Are like, you really about this dad and I am I integrity I bet you and I life am. stuff? I bet you I am. Wow. I bet you I am. I will I I will put I will put my life up against anybody's 90 second clip of me. Wow. And see and see who come out on top. Yeah. Man. Mm-hmm. I can say that with a straight face. Man, you truly are sequential. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> I'm sick of you. <laughs> I'm sick of you. <laughs> Oh my God! You're the most sequential person I've ever met in my life. I'm I'm amazed. All right, back where we were. Yeah. You work everywhere. Yes, sir. It doesn't room. It doesn't matter what room. Hispanic, white, black, traditional, contemporary, jeans, suits. Doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Lapel, handheld. <laughs> you are Tim Ross. Yes, sir. Everywhere. Yes, sir. Um, I love your approach. I feel like I have a very similar approach, even theologically. Um. The way I approach the word, I love that you don't. This cheap preaching to me, and I don't mean to be offensive. I don't mean to be offensive at all to anybody. Just call a spade a spade. Cheap preaching, and me and Ferdy talk about this. It's just like uh, kind of unofficially my preaching coach. We talk almost every week mm-hmm. about you know the previous sermon and stuff, and uh, the the guy's just brilliant. He's yeah, brilliant. he is. He's 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 in a different stratosphere. Um, cheap preaching is hater preaching. It is to me. Yeah. You don't waste space. Absolutely correct. And I don't either, but yeah. I would like to know your why. Um, my why is because um, that type of preaching requires no burden from God. <laughs> if I'm preaching, if I'm if I'm preaching about my haters, that means I'm thinking about my haters. Ooh. If I'm thinking about my haters, I'm not thinking about what God is telling to me. And so if I approach scripture, not with God's burden, but with my emotions, Mm. then I go look for scripture that matches my emotion. Yes. As opposed to allowing the Holy Spirit to draw me to scripture that matches God's burden. Mm. Yes. Yes. 
There was a there there was a passage of scripture that I could not preach for ten years mm. because that passage of scripture always reminded me of a person that mm -hmm. hurt me, mm -hmm. and I could never see the scripture without seeing the person. Mm. So two things: the Holy Spirit never gave me a burden to preach it. Mm. And number two, I never overrode the Holy Spirit yeah. and tried to and tried to preach that text because mm. it would have been disingenuous. Mm. If I'm preaching, I a never overrode the Holy Spirit. I never overrode the Holy Ooh. Spirit on that. If I'm ever preaching a text that, um, and if I'm ever preaching a text and I'm thinking about a person, that's a text I should not be preaching. Please, ladies and gentlemen, all communicators, young and old. Write that down. Yes, sir. Jesus. Yes, sir. Man. Yes, sir. Wow. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because th and think about and I'm a literalist, right? And I and I, I picture everything. If you preach that, okay, say you preach it. You preach to your haters. They're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Them niggas hate you. They hate you. They're not listening. So who are you talking to? So now you've subjected your whole congregation that don't care to somebody that ain't listening to you? Yeah, yeah. They don't like you. Yeah. But people get excited about also... People get excited about hater preaching too. Like you yeah, can work a crowd carnal. with that because it's carnal. Yeah, you're appealing to somebody's flesh. Yep, yep. And this yep. is the difference between getting somebody high and getting somebody <sighs> dead. Ooh. I don't preach for people to get happy. I preach for people to die. <laughs> and that's on American Gangster. Ooh. That's where I got that from. Wow. Um, I watched that movie, and. The Holy Spirit said, this is what's happening in the body of Christ. And I said, the, the, the body of Christ is doing heroin? <laughs> the body of Christ is on that blue magic? Oh, man. And he said, no. Um, he said, let me tell you what's happening. He said, um, uh, there are people within the body that won't come directly to the source. Mm. So they're preaching everybody else's message. Mm. They're preaching this stepped on, watered down grace message. They're mm. preaching this stepped on, watered down faith message. Mm. They're preaching this stepped down, watered on, because they won't come directly to the source. Yeah, I got something to say. When Frank went to Asia and got that heroin himself, mm. he brought it back. It had never been stepped on. Mm. It had never been diluted. Mm. It had never been watered down. Mm. So it was almost 100% pure. Mm. What the people were were getting on the streets up until that blue magic hit the hit the street mm. was ten to fifteen percent pure. Mm. So they was getting high, mm. and then they were coming down, and they needed another fix. Mm. They got his stuff, and it was so pure they didn't get high. They were dying. Jesus, that's how pure it was. Ooh. Their system couldn't handle it, and they <sighs> died. That's what the gospel should do to you. Ooh. The gospel so pure, the truth, Ooh. uncut, is so pure, you shouldn't get high off it. You should mm. die. It should kill your flesh. Mm. It should kill your unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. It should kill your lust. Mm -hmm. It should kill your pettiness. Mm -hmm. It should kill your anger. Wow. It should kill your bitterness. Wow. That's what the truth of Jesus does. But if we out here just happy, happy, joy, joy, mm. then you preaching a carnal message that's appealing to people's carnality. Yeah. That won't grow, that won't change. That won't that grow, won't, won't change. Yeah. And at the end of it, didn't we have a time? Come back to get high. Mm-hmm. Everybody getting high, but don't, nobody wants to die. Oof. Bar. Imagine carrying a cross you never use. How you on? How you carrying a cross you never been on it? But you can wear it around your neck. Ooh. But you can't have it on your back. Mm-mm. Mm I don't play that. Mm -mm. My wife is having a Holy Ghost fit over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to turn to a Terrian service real quick. I mean, make a joke. God. That's a word. But yeah. it's so true. Yes, sir. It's so true. Yeah. Uh, I think you 
spelt it out in just a very um, powerful and practical way of like, man, we, yeah. Yeah. We need the pure we need gospel. It, we need it pure and uncut, bro. I, w- I was um, on a, uh, a serious XM interview uh, with a guy named Clay Kane. Mm-hmm. And um, he took the whole conversation to homosexuality. Mm. And I, I mean, started with my book and then just took the whole thing to homosexuality. Yeah. And went, went, to went the- from Speedos to homosexuality <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> almost, it was almost like that. And um, what he put out on YouTube, he literally took out anything that had to do with the book and just put mm. the 15 minute part about homosexuality and thought I was going to change because I was on the radio and talking about my book and maybe he thought, I don't know what he thought, Mm. but then once he got, (laughs) once I gave him that Bible, he, he was less than pleased. Yeah. But I have nothing else to give anybody. Yeah. The, the, the Bible is not a constitution. It can't be amended. Mm. These are commandments from a king, not a yeah. constitution from a president. Yes, it sir. cannot be ratified. It cannot mm. be changed. And so uh, th- there's an old, old uh, song. I know the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. 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 The Bible's going to be right. And somebody's going to be wrong. I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> Before that Bible's wrong. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But if we if if that's not the way we approach it, if we approach it as a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. It's a suggestion for my sexuality. Yeah. It's a suggestion for my sex drive. Yeah. It it suggests how I should treat my neighbor. Yeah. Nah, those are commands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knew what he was saying. Yeah. He knew what he was saying yeah. and applied across all time. It didn't change. Yeah. Because we changed. Yeah. It didn't change because we evolved. Yeah. It didn't change because policy changed. Yeah. And so if we're too afraid as believers yeah. to stand on what scripture says, because of some outside pressure, yeah, you, you, it's that's an offense to those first apostles. Man, we ain't going through nothing. You stuttering over a commandment? They was yeah. dying. Yeah, for their yeah. king, and yeah. you stuttering over a commandment in America? Yeah, not in yeah. Palestine. Right, nothing can happen to you except a post. And we scared of that. Yeah, we scared of that because we we. Oh, I've been on this thing. You got me. You got me turned up. Yeah, I'll, 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 this is the, you. You preaching my my whole life message. This is all. This is Forest City. <laughs> Literally, this this is where I preach. Yes, Everybody sir. who watching Forest City, like we heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have this. Yes, sir. So so uh, Philippians two says that Jesus thought himself of no reputation. Yep. But we do. <laughs> We love our reputation. Oh, yeah. We want to be liked. Oh, yeah. We want likes, subscriptions, and yep. follows. Yep. And Jesus thought himself, no, I don't have no reputation to hold on to. Yeah. Y'all can y'all can drag me through the mud. Yeah. I sleep good at night. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, listen, man. This is, I don't need no chicken. Uh, what my wife ordered me? <laughs> <laughs> Chicken taco. I'm, I'm getting full off this. Yo, <laughs> I wrote a book. It comes out May 14th. Are you praying for the wrong thing? Mm. It's behind you. That's a galley copy. You know, they, mm. they send us the galley copies. <clears throat> um, Are you praying for the wrong thing? Yeah, man. Yeah. Learning to ask what God wants for you, not just what you want. Yeah. Holla at me, bro. Yeah, yeah. I I, I did not even know that was there. <laughs> Next to my daddy. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it's a message that we need. I think we're living in a time where so many people in the church believe that we're waiting on God. Mm. And for most of us, he's waiting on us. Mm. And we have this misconception that we, we've we taken Paul's scripture way out of context. That Which one? Because we take a lot. Oh, uh, this one we've definitely taken out of context. He will give you the desires of your heart. 
First of all, there's an A clause to it. It says, if you delight yourself in the Lord. You can't skip that part. First, you got to delight in him. And it doesn't mean he'll give you what you want. It means he'll give you what to want. And that's, that's totally different. And so the book is not a book about prayer. It's a book about you of getting in proper alignment to be able to find out what is God's desire. There are a lot of people in the church that are upset with God because they are shouting and praying and fasting on something he never promised. God didn't say that. <laughs> and so this this book, uh, the principles in it, the truths in it have shifted my life. Um, my, my message, my life message is to the body of Christ, man, is fam, we got to grow up. That's what I preach. I preach accountability. I preach less about miracles, more about management, less about stuff, more about strategy that, and I'm, I'm, I'm charismatic to my core as are you. Most people don't know that, but I'm charismatic to my core. But man, we we have gotten a lot of people hyped up that don't even know how to handle what they're praying and praising for. Like, God, I I don't want to just shout about a harvest that I'm gonna mismanage. You heal me from cancer and I jump in front of a bus. What sense does that make? You 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 <laughs> you give me a financial harvest and I, I I waste it. Like, what sense does that make? So, man, grow me up, mature me, as my boy Rich says, so that I actually know how to manage. I call it the trust zone, that I don't just want to, man, you know, you could be known by God, that's great. You could be used by God, that's great. Fam, I want to be trusted. I, I want God to look at and say, you know what, Travis? I trust you at the basement. You know what, Travis? I trust you at the potter's house. You know what, Travis? I trust you. In this room, I trust you in this space. I, man, to be trusted by God yes, is the highest compliment of heaven. Agreed. And that's what the book is about. That's what my message is about. That's what my life is about. Uh, praying for the right thing and getting in alignment with God. Not just wishful thinking. Not just, man, I hope you do this. I wish you'd do this. I, I can't wait. Can't wait till you do this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but like, man, grow me up so mm -hmm. that I can handle what it is I'm, I'm believing God for. Okay, so this is uh, 1 Corinthians 3. Lord have mercy, you are. All right. Dear brother, I'm, I'm going to start from... Verse number one, dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, I mean, I can't even I can't even imagine if you're Corinth reading this letter and you're just like, oh, my God. I had to water it down for you. Oh, I had to talk as though you belong to this world. Whew. Or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, mm. because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still aren't ready. It'll choke you. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. <laughs> you are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? Man, you read out you read out loud so good. You're such a <laughs> dork. <laughs> so so what what I love about what you're saying is Forward City is a meat church. Mm. And let me tell you something. The growth of a protein church mm. is different. Yes, sir. Than the growth of a milk church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Babies are drawn to milk. But you're going to need some teeth if you're going to eat meat. Wow. The growth rate is just different. Yeah. But the quality of the person you yes, get. Yes, sir. Ooh! Yes, sir. I feel like we living in a parallel universe the way you talking. Because that was, that was Embassy City under my mm -hmm. leadership for seven years. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, I'll never forget, because um, uh, I'm in the Bible Belt. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was dealing with some like ridiculously religious spirits. Oh, yeah. I, when I got up that, I remember one Sunday I got up and I said, um, I know this is going to kill the Pentecostals in the room, but why are you still pleading the blood? Mm. When I tell you them church mothers almost died... <laughs> I said, why are you still, to plead means to beg. Mm. How are you begging for something he gave you before you knew to ask for it? Mm. Mm. You already got it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need yeah. to beg for it. It's already been shed. Mm. And it's efficacious enough. It still works. Yep, it works. Right now. Mm -hmm. It shall never lose. It's pow. It's pow. <laughs> <laughs> Pow. <laughs> Old school Batman. <laughs> Pow. Bam. <laughs> thwap. Boom. Biff. <laughs> it bro, works. Bro, that's going to make some people, that helps people grow up. Yeah. Ooh, I can't wait for this book to come out. Ooh. Can you say that point again? It, it's something for you, to you. What did you say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. That does not mean he'll give you what you want. It means he'll give you what to want. I don't want to be wanting what he don't want for me. That, that's a waste of prayer time. <laughs> so um, so let me let me give you a practical yay and amen because I've lived this. Yeah countless times but this house is one of them mm. the moment Juliet walked into this house she fell in love with it mm. I did not want to move here mm. it's 35 minutes away from the church I pastored from obviously e from I everything from it's 30 minutes away from everything yeah. right we're, we're 45 minutes from Oklahoma right so I'm like I don't know I don't want to live up here and I was in my when I tell you I was in my feelings and in my flesh because <laughs> I'm like you ain't got to drive there every every day I got, I'm gonna have to drive <laughs> There every day. It's 35 minutes away. Blah, 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 blah. And then in traffic, it's going to be like 50 minutes. And, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, and, and so anyway, I told her, I said, have a eulogy for this home in your heart. What, cry <laughs> about it. Whatever you get, need to do because we're not moving here. Yeah. Right? And I'll never forget, I was in Perth, Western Australia. I had just finished preaching there. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I preached my last sermon. I'm come, trying to still trying to come down. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, before we start traveling back to America, Juliet is, her head is right here on my shoulder and, and she sleep and the Holy Spirit said, I want to talk to you about that house. I literally heard my soul say, what is there to talk about? <laughs> I literally, I mean, it was, you talking about, I was in my flesh for real. Oh, I said, man. what is there to talk about? I told her no. Like yeah. it, there's nothing to talk we're about. We're good. We're good. We're good. And he said, um, go look up the definition of the street that you're on. Mm. And so I go look it up and it has to do with, like, it's connected to, like, diplomacy and ambassadorship. His and address, everybody, is... I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's connected to diplomacy and, 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 and uh, ambassadorship and stuff like that. And the name of our church is Embassy. Wow. So I'm like, okay, so there's symbolism there. So I start in my mind, oh, my God, wait a minute. Come on, man. Don't do this. Mm. And he said, Tim, that's not just the house she wants. Mm. It's the house I want. Whoa. Whoa. And, dude, I heard the ugliest thing come out of my soul. And this is what he wanted. This is what he wanted to get to the root of. I literally heard my soul say, and it embarrassed me as soon as I heard it. <laughs> None of this was out loud. Mm -hmm. I literally said, why does she always get to win? Mm. And it was like the Holy Spirit was like, that's what I'm after. Bingo. This ain't got nothing to do with the house. Mm. You think she's getting her way again. Mm. 
So you think she gets her way and you don't get your way. Mm. So let's deal with that. And I was literally like, I'm so sorry, Lord. <laughs> this is my fault. My soul is dark. I'm wicked and I'm wretched <laughs> and I'm in need of a savior. <laughs> she was asleep right here the whole time. And I'm Man. literally thinking to myself, like, she always gets what she wants and I never get what I want. I don't want to live in that house and blah, blah, blah. And I and and I and I have a shallow grave in the backyard, what I call affectionately as the backyard of my soul. Mm. I have a shallow grave in the backyard of my soul, and it's littered with thousands of me, mm. of my ego, mm. that I've taken to the backyard of my soul and shot it in the back of the head and buried it. Mm. And that was one other instance that I had to do. This house was God's will for our lives. Woo. He knew this season was coming. Wow. He knew this season was coming. This is the house He wanted for us. This is not the house I wanted. Mm. It's the house he wanted for us. Man. And he put the desire in Juliet's heart. It wasn't in my heart. And I could not even embrace it mm. until I got rid of my ego. So let's talk about how many people can't receive God's Shh. desires for them because their ego's in the way. They're not delighting. They're not delighting. They're despising. Mm. They despise themselves in the Lord. Mm. <laughs> I guess with the I guess it's what the Lord won't. Mm. That yep. whole attitude. Yeah, yeah. That ain't yeah. delighting. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll just do the will of God. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yep. He ain't let me do nothing else. So yep. I guess I just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I gotta live in Detroit. I mean, yep. I don't get to. Yeah. You don't want God to give you what you want. You don't, you don't want that. You think you do. You think you, you think, you think you want God to give you that high school linebacker. You think. And then 20 years later, you say, man, how many, how, some of us just need to have a praise break and give him a thank Ooh, you. For, for what the, he didn't give for you. For the times he ignored you. Ooh. My God. If I had my way, boy, boy, we don't, we don't know what to want. Ooh! We're not good enough. Mm. We're not smart enough. Mm. We're not alpha or omega enough mm -mm. Mm -mm. to actually know mm -mm. Mm -mm. what we want. Mm -mm. The best thing we can do. Mm. Is pull up mm. and say, yo, pops, mm. please direct me. Order mm. my steps. I don't want to lean to my own shallow, limited, finite understanding. Yo, this, uh, every, I see everything. <laughs> everything connects to me. It, it, I just, I feel like that was on display when Jackie said he's going to have the chicken tacos. And you were like, well, I, what am I having? <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. Let God order for you off the menu. Woo. Come on. Woo. I don't know what I want. Mm -mm. Walk into the restaurant, sit down, and go, I'm having whatever he says. Woo. Woo. That thing is, <laughs> that thing felt right. Huh? Woo. Oh, 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 open, open up. Woo. I mean, think about it. He's been here before. Okay, okay. If, if Jesus gets what he wants in the Garden of Gethsemane, we short. <laughs> if he gets his way, if he gets his will, yeah, there is no redemption for our sins. Yeah. Three times, let this cut pass. Boy, please, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no redemption for yeah. mankind. Yeah, you've wasted 33 years. <laughs> if you don't finish. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Man, this book is necessary. Yeah. This book is necessary because we, a lot of us are walking around. Uh, there's a, there's too many. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Holy Spirit. You. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hey, sometimes he be saying stuff. I be like, Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> there, there, there's two. There's okay, Holy Spirit. Okay, sir. There, there's too many believers, um, 
unknowingly practicing witchcraft and calling it prayer. It's not prayer, it's an incantation. Yeah, you might as well be holding a seance. Mm -hmm. Put your crystals away, put your incense away. Stop putting on Maverick and incense. You, you, you're going to call up a medium and wish you didn't. You don't need your grandmother's spirit to come back. She's not watching over you. Right. Your deceased loved ones is not watching over you. My daddy is not in heaven. He don't have no... And my, my, dad, daddy, my daddy's not in heaven thinking about me. Right. That wouldn't be heaven. That would be hell. Mm. My daddy didn't get wings. He's not an angel. Mm. He does... He, his spirit is with the Lord. Mm -hmm. His his body has not come back to him yet. Mm. There's only one human body in heaven, and that's Jesus. Mm. It ascended. It shall come back. Mm. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then those that are still here will be caught up to meet him in the air. That's the book. That's the word. But but all this, your your dead loved ones are, have now become a part of the great cloud of witnesses that are looking over and cheering you on. Sorry. Yeah. They're, they're too happy in the presence of the Lord to be thinking about us right now. Yeah. Our hope is to meet them, yeah. not them up there hoping to see us. But I don't need y'all practicing witchcraft yeah. and calling it prayer. <laughs> I think sometimes we be singing the same songs as God. Like we be singing, I'm going to wait on you. And God be singing, I'm going to wait on you. I don't mind waiting. And God says, I don't mind waiting. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. I'm waiting on Travis. <laughs> like we, you, most of the times, it ain't on him. We're not ready. Or we're praying for something he don't want. Okay, this 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 is this brings me to a conversation based on a revelation the Lord gave me years ago about ambition. Mm. Um, from Genesis to Revelation, I can only find one verse in the whole Bible where ambition even attempts to be used in a positive connotation. Mm. And that's in the book of Romans mm. around the 15th chapter when Paul says, it is my ambition uh, to preach, uh, to plant churches where no other churches have been planted. Mm -hmm. um, is it 15? I'm sorry, the nerd in me is like fact checking. So let me just at least see if that's true. Uh, Thank you, Tara. Uh, that might be my cousin. I got a cousin yeah, yeah, yeah. named Tara. Yeah, it is 15. She okay. says she pre-ordering a book. Thank oh, you, Tara. Thank you, Tara. Uh, please, yeah, everybody get this book, because really? Um, so, so uh, 1520, my ambition has always been to preach the, the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. Mm. So that's Romans 1520. That's Paul's ambition, and it never comes to pass. Mm. Like he doesn't even get to go where he wanted to go. He wants to go to Spain. He never got there. Mm. So, and in every other thing, place, it's a negative connotation. Horrible. So then, as a wordsmith, I started thinking about, well, what's the most dangerous form of ambition? Mm. If, if all ambition usually has a negative connotation, and even the good ambition is kind of like sus, what is the, the most dangerous form of ambition? I conclude the most dangerous form of ambition is what we what I refer to as godly ambition. <laughs> and I define godly ambition as wanting to do something for God that he never said he wanted to do through you. Now, why do I say it's the most dangerous form? Because the moment you slap God on it, who's going to argue with you? 
Mm. God told me to start a food bank for the city. But y'all only got 22 cans of green beans in the food bank. Yeah. And still calling it God, like God told you to. Yeah. No, I don't think he told you to. Yeah. God told us to start 14 campuses. Y'all second campus barely works. <laughs> Your second campus is a small group. It's not even a campus. There's nine people in a house. That's not expansion. Oh, man. We're going to take the entire city. You haven't taken the block. Man. Don't worry about the whole city. Yeah. You, you Take your block. Your and you blo don't speak all the languages in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your block doesn't know you're there. Yeah. Let alone the city. Yeah. This region is ours. <laughs> the, the whole flipping region? <laughs> It's a lot of work. The mayor doesn't know you. <laughs> the get a chief key first. of police does not know you. <laughs> you haven't bought pizza for the fire department. The region is your... The region, nigga. The region. <laughs> Do you hear you? The region. Oh, man. Principalities and strongholds over cities just giggling. <laughs> yeah, they don't know your name, man. They know you. So, so I think godly ambition is dangerous, bro. Whoa. Yeah, because we make up stuff to do for God he never said he wanted to do through us. Mm. But because we like we wanted to do it for God, it sounds so noble. And like, there ain't no grace out there, so we just neck it. When I tell up. you seven sons of Siva just... Getting told, just... slap up. <laughs> and that's Speedo. <laughs> Getting told. Getting towed up by the Speedo clan. <laughs> A speedo demon is real. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he looks like he got a black eye. What happened? I, last thing I know is I saw a speedo and then, then I then, then I gained consciousness and I Oh man. Kind of dizzy. <laughs> Yo. That is crazy. Yeah. Godly ambition. Godly ambition. Ooh, I think it's dangerous. We don't preach that enough. Yeah, I think it's dangerous. Man think it's dangerous man there's a thin line between inspiring people to do the will of god and charging people to do something they've never been commissioned to do fam you ain't got no grace for that no everybody for ain't that. supposed to be no apostle yeah man prophet evangelist pastor and teacher yeah we actually think the five-fold ministry means plant a church yeah yeah or 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 add a title or at Add a title. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just, I can't tell you how many apostolic people I know that are principals over school districts. Whoa. That's right. Whoa. That's right. I can't tell you how many prophets I know that are that are like entrepreneurs. Yeah, for sure. That same prophetic edge is why they're multimillionaires now. Wow. Because the Holy Spirit told them what was going on in culture. Wow. They know how to discern the times. Wow. So... Like the sons of Issachar. Yeah. So, man. so, so, like, like we're we're wow. We don't we don't tell people that the majority of these giftings are going to wind up in the marketplace anyway. Yeah. And that the local church is supposed to equip them so they can be released to go yes, do what sir. they what they do. And 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 we gotta we gotta from the church side. Yeah. And please let me know if you if you agree with this, but from the church side, we 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 have to stop making a full-time ministry job seem like the most honored position yeah. you could have in the world. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of people that are doing really good. <clears throat> in, For sure. But they're like, man, I just, I, I just really believe I'm supposed to be in full-time ministry. Yeah. And I'm like, you're already in full-time ministry. Yeah, yeah. You're making $237,000 a year. You want to come on staff of this church? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna pay you eighty two. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, but two hundred and thirty seven. I'm keeping that job. Yeah, and I'm gonna just pay my tithes to the church <laughs> and volunteer on the weekends. Your tithe can hire somebody. Get ex Come on now. Yeah, who actually have that call? I agree. I call it engaged culture. Yeah, that's kind of my my hashtag. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think there's three responses you can have to culture. And culture is all around us. It's undeniable. Yep. The clothing we wear, the food we eat, the paint we collect. Yeah. You know, um, the responses. You can complain about culture. You can conform. Mm. Or you can confront. Mm. 
this podcast confronts culture, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and people get it bent. The twenty five percent get it bent, like oh they're conforming. No, we're confronting, fam. Like, and the only way to confront to engage against culture is to move upstream, to be a part of the conversation, to get a doggone seat at the table, That's man. Right. Like, that there's a lot of people who, if we just allow these four walls of a church to become a cage, there's a lot of people on the outside, and I think. I think we've raised up a lot of lazy mm-hmm. believers mm-hmm. who fish in the aquarium and like fam there's a there's a whole ocean a dangerous ocean out there that needs us and until we get the courage the wisdom <laughs> the integrity to be trusted out there we're just going to be right up in here and calling this the work of the lord And we're glad that a drunkard walked in. Remember those days in the yes, 90s? Yes, I do. Oh, my God. He walked in off the street and yep. got saved. Yep. Fam, it's 10 more of That's them exactly out there. That's exactly right. And we won't go to And them. we won't go. Bro, I am I mean, I think my chest just, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Engage, man. When I, I mean, I see everything in pictures. And as soon as you said we fish in an aquarium. Mm-hmm. They already caught. <laughs> We just cleaning what's already caught. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, man. Oh, dude, that that man, that thing just that thing is so vivid because, um, our. I've always referred to what we're doing right now as a blue ocean. You're mm. launching it to the deep. Yeah. This is a um And it hadn't been done. That's so what I'm man, it's let me just ocean. speak on behalf of the anti dwellers and say, Man, can we have some grace? Mm. The dude is out in the it ain't been done. Mm. Who has done where's the blueprint? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, man, if he say something that you take a clip of, like, my God, like, fam, I'm cheering you on. It hadn't been done. There has never been a pastor in his prime who's preaching at any given moment in front of thousands and leading a church that's thriving and traveling around the world and that and said, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going to sit on the couch mm. and launch in the deep. That's never happened. Ever. Yeah. I don't know if it ever, I mean, it might happen now that they see it work. You know, you have some people, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. get yeah. them some yellow glass and say, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. God said, <laughs> <laughs> forget all y'all ungrateful Negroes. I am going to start a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But it hadn't been done, man. Yeah. Yo, you do like y'all launching into the deep, man. It's, Dangerous waters out here. Yeah, it is. And um, when, when you when you in the deep, um, you can't put a worm on the hook and call it bait. Ooh. Ooh. That'll work in a pond. Ooh. That won't work in the deep. Mm. You you got to put something on that hook mm. big enough. Mm. To catch what you going after, yeah. And so, um, no, I really appreciate you saying that, because as as uh, as aware as I think I am, mm. it's it's still right here. Yeah. So to hear, I really appreciate the encouragement, but also the perspective, because I didn't think about that. Like I'm I'm not out here thinking like I'm the first one to do something like this. Yeah. I'm not thinking about that. Um, and I have seen some other pastors th- that have started podcasts but for what i'm doing mm. you can't stay a pastor mm. Mm. can't do it yeah you can talk about you can talk about leadership you can't talk to culture yeah That's yeah right. yeah <laughs> yep i know the are. way that you're gonna have to <clears throat> talk to culture mm-hmm. is different than the way you talk to your congregation yeah for sure 
And if you and, and again, this is a this is a preferential thing. I'm not saying everybody has to do what I've done. Yeah. Cuz I'm when you talked about being born and raised in church, me too, but I'm uh, instead of just being a, a church boy, I'm a street church boy. Yeah. Right? I, I had both, yeah. right? So as soon as I walked out my door, I'm in an environment yeah. that if you're not street savvy, you're going to be dead yeah. or beat up every day. Yeah. But as soon as I came back in the house, yeah. y- y- you know what I mean? Yeah. It is going to be John P. Key. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be uh, the Mississippi Mass Choir. Timothy Wright. It's going to be Timothy Wright. <laughs> it's going to be... Um, Fred uh, Commission. F- Fred. Daddy was on hard on Fred Commission and the Winans. Um, it's going to be Daryl Coley. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be James Moore. Yeah. Um, so so it's a it's a <sighs> yeah. This is different. This is different, and I feel anointed for it. Yeah. I feel called to it. Um, um, and I'm I'm. I I, I the the somebody asked me the the last uh book stop we had was in Fort Worth, and somebody asked how can we be praying for you. Mm. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a pot. I'm, I talked too much. It was a pot I did uh, last week. And somebody said, how can we be praying for you? And I said, and I actually read it to him. Mm. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because it's better if I just read it. So so I, I went to Acts 4 and I said, if you're going to pray for me, mm. I want the same prayer that was given uh to Peter and John and the rest of the disciples in Acts 4. Uh, Stretch out your hand. Oh, uh, first from from verse 29. And now, O Lord, hear their threats, Mm. the 25%, Mm. and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Mm. That's all I want. That's all I want. Yeah. Because it's undeniable. Go go pull up the interview with, with, with Clay Kane. Yeah. Go look at my interview on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. I didn't get out in culture yeah. and try to be soft and yeah. try to walk on eggshells yeah. and I want to be accepted by mm-hmm. DJ Envy and Charlemagne. Yeah, I, I want I want the world to accept me. Nah, yeah. you gave me this platform. Yeah, you put me on Tamron Hall. Yeah, I'm about to uh, you about to get this work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> straight up. I ain't about to get up here and obit Jesus. Yeah, or or cause something that that is. Uh, directly against uh, the teachings of Scripture, something that is okay, yeah. or get light on sin and yeah. and and then no, no, yeah, or lifestyle. I, I don't. I'm not scared of nobody's community. Yeah, nobody's community. Yeah, I grew up in the hood. Yeah, there were no neighbors. It's just a hood. Huh. So y'all getting <laughs> y'all getting cute with your communities. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not afraid of nobody's community. Yeah, you know what I mean. I survived yeah. the hood, so your community is going to be fine. Yeah, either we have common unity or we don't. Mm. But don't think I'm gonna roll up and then switch up. Well, it's not gonna happen. Love it. And don't think my bait's gonna change either. Mm. Cause I'm out here with sharks. For real. And y'all in there with goldfish. For real. For real. <laughs> For real. With security guards. With security guards. <laughs> got five security guards, you an apostle, and got one other church nowhere. <laughs> Talking about your online community is your apostolic ministry. Amen. You're lazy and the truth is not in you. Oh. And if the shoe fits, put it on. Huh? Put it on. Okay. <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> oh man. Hey, okay, so oh, they man. got some questions. Um, oh man, let's go. We got some voice message questions for y'all. I love it. Let's I get, love it. Might Dwellers. Be, might be for y'all to tag team it or maybe just you travel, see how it goes. This is from DHT. Hey Tim and Travis, uh, would y'all speak on um just what discipleship looks like um in a church plant? I could go mm-hmm. on a whole rant, but just to keep this as short as possible. Um, yeah, would you all just speak on that? We're part of a church plan, and it just seems like sometimes the growth, for lack of better words, is prioritized over relationships, um, people, etc. I'm being quiet because um, I'm at <laughs> work, but um, yeah. That's, I love that. My husband and I are kind of frustrated with the whole thing, so we've connected with some great few, uh, with some great people, uh, with just a few on a deeper level, but yeah, would y'all just speak on that? You know what, just what discipleship looks like um, in a church plant. 
or even church in general. Thanks so much. Love y'all. We love you. Yeah. Wow. I'm at work. <laughs> oh, no. This, yeah. This is how we get down. You're in the deep. Yeah. We People we, everywhere. Yeah. We out here. Yeah. Wow. We out here. On um, a Monday, middle of the day. On a Monday. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a first step. I yep. think my approach as a as a church planter, we're about to turn eight. Um, I think, uh, one, grace, right? If God told you to be there. Um, it's hard pastoring. There are a lot of things that pull on you that you prioritize. And those priorities, the more you mature and the more your congregation evolves, so those priorities shift. But there was a season where it was just, fam, if you can smell and articulate <laughs> a sentence, mm -hmm. you're a leader in this church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Good smell. Man, yeah. you said a complete <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you're over kids. That's yes, right. <laughs> So true. It's so, it's so true. As a church planner, baby, you just trying to make it work. Yeah, you got sure. limited resources. You got limited. And when I say resources, I ain't even talking about Benjamins. I'm talking about people. Yep. You just trying to make that thing shake, fam. Yep. You trying to get through. Yep. Sunday to Sunday. So as a church planter, um, I'll say, man, please have grace for whoever the leader is that you're with. Um, I know for us, you know, the more we grew wide, the more we um were became aware of the lack of depth and we we had to see some seasons of people who we thought were were actually good mm -hmm. we had to see them fall yep, uh, yep. And over and over yep. you know and that for us was like oh wait a minute Dang, I thought this marriage was good. Mm -hmm. Dang, I thought this dude was faithful. Mm -hmm. Man, I thought this worship leader was <laughs> I thought this, I thought that and it was like, "Oh, you know what?" People need, well, let's back up, man. We got a lot of technology. We got great lights. We got great music. We got great kids ministry. We got all the metrics. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we got all the stuff that looks good. Yep. But let's back up to the stuff that's actually going to keep you, and which is the word, and yep. which is community, that's accountability. Right. Yep. Um, so those things, and, and uh, applying those things have to be intentional. One, that's my first answer. The second thing is, I love what she said. Uh, what was her name, Hector? Let me find her real quick. D.H. Yeah. Tika. D.H. Tika. I love, I love what she said um, at the end that she and her family ha have been building relationships. I think that's another part of it that's just very important. Mm -hmm. um, to not just wait on the leaders to... Oh man, when are they going to start a small group? Or when are we going to have discipleship? When we going to? We need Wednesday night Bible study. We need Sunday school. Like fam, everybody know what Starbucks at. Walk in the lobby, make some friends. I'm glad that she's doing that because that was definitely the second part of my answer. Apply the grace to your leader, but then also, you know, man, it, it ain't nothing for y'all to. My mom used to just have everybody at the crib when I was growing up. After church, after rehearsal, after whatever, and you build friends, you build relationships yourself. Um, man, let's go into, man, this is a great message. What did you get out of it yep. over lunch and, and dig like that? It doesn't have to be structured That's to right. be actually discipleship oh, emotion. Okay. So you, you're, you're, all I got to do is cosign you. <laughs> this alley-oop is too easy. <laughs> so discipleship has to be, um, individualized and decentralized. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Like we, we gotta, we gotta tell people, okay, go make a disciple. Yeah. You, you, I call you now go make a disciple. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so I pulled up Acts 2.42. Yep. Uh, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching mm. and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. That's, that's discipleship 101. Mm. Go over the teachings of, of mm -hmm. your, your leaders. Mm -hmm. Fellowship with one another. Eat, eat some good food. <laughs> yep. Right? Or drink a good drink. Mm -hmm. And then pray for one another. Yeah, that's that that that's how you perpetuate this. Mm -hmm. If you're asking about one on one discipleship, you're asking about something different. Right. But when the in the context of a church community, it needs to be uh, individualized and decentralized. We mm -hmm. don't need like these stellar leaders. Yeah. To be over every single body. Right. We 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 need people just getting together mm -hmm. and saying we want to grow as believers. Let's get in this word. Yep. Right now, if y'all getting in the Bible and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I don't think pastor preaching the right thing. Yeah. You're no longer a disciple. You are cancer. 
Exactly. And you might be malignant or you might be benign. Maybe you just felt away after one Sunday. Yeah. But if or or but if it's malignant, then you metastasize and you mm-hmm. start souring other people and blah blah blah. But um, uh, th- th- you got to remember that there is a difference between the the church. Uh, in 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 the context of church, there is the organism mm. and the organization. Yeah, and the organism needs the organization for structure. Right, but then the the structure needs to have room for the organism to expand. Right, and that's always a tension right. that every leader is dealing with as they are growing their church. Right, and these growing pains that you're feeling and experiencing are nothing. Um, uh, isolated. Yeah, we can all relate to that. Oh, yeah. on both sides. Absolutely. So, hope that helps. Absolutely. Great. We got we got one from a Jason. Hey, Theo, Tim. I'm just sending a message because I'm getting married in three weeks, and I'm super excited about it. But this last week has brought a lot of tension because, as we've discussed, um, the planning for the reception. Um, We've had a little bit of pushback from family because uh, we're planning on serving alcohol uh, as a cash bar and also dancing. Um, And from my fiance's side of the family, they're not saved, um, but they don't really have any problem with that. Now, my fiance and I, we choose not to drink so often. We limit it to once in a while. We'll have a drink with some friends, um, especially because we are in leadership. We know we we just don't want to abuse of a privilege that we do have. Um, but my parents are on the side of alcohol is a sin, dancing is a sin, and it's gotten to the point where my father is saying he won't attend my wedding oh, um, because of that. So I'm wondering if you have any advice on how to honor my parents, um, honor my fiance's family, and love my fiance, and um, if there's maybe something we need to cut back on or or if this is something that we just kind of have to let it be. Um, but I'm a dweller for life, love the B-side, and uh, thank you for answering my question. I dope. appreciate it. That's dope. Hey, yo. Hey, Jason, I love you. Now, you know I'm in this season of my life where <laughs> <laughs> really don't have a lot of pleasantries to give and a lot of this. Just lie, just lie, Jason. Just lie. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, so Jason here's what I'm gonna say oh, man. Um, uh, every man is to leave and cleave to his wife the moment you say I do to your bride your parents become your extended family whoa Whoa. I'm going to let it marinate. Mm. The moment you say I do, your parents are no longer your immediate family. They are, they are your extended family. Mm. This is your wedding. These are your regulations. And you and your wife get to decide what that is. Mm. And if the presence of alcohol, not drunkenness, if the presence of alcohol is too much for your father, send him the tape. Mm. Send him the tape of the wedding. Mm. Now, if it is important that your father be there, don't have any alcohol there. Mm. And if you feel that that's honoring, that's great. The thing I would the thing I would caution is if if this is the precedent you are setting that your parents can control this event, mm. what other things might they control in your marriage going forward? If this is a one off, then we can make a concession. But if it's something that you feel like, you know what, if I set this precedent now, my daddy and mommy could also say, I gotta drink Capri Suns for the rest of my life. <laughs> Or I don't like that my grandchildren, when y'all start having kids, I don't like that my grandchildren are in this kind of play. And da, 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 da. I know there's a generational thing and all that kind of stuff. All I'm saying is I'm not even I'm not even thinking I'm, I'm supposed to answer your question. I just need you to consider some things. 
Mm-hmm. And the consideration, the biggest consideration is you are leaving and cleaving to your wife and you and your wife are now one flesh, not you and your parents. Mm. And so wow. this might be the day that you have to be a man in a different way, not in a um, not in an aggressive way or, or in a haughty way. Like, I'll show you, you ain't going to tell me. Not like that. Yeah. But boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries. If you and your wife don't drink alcohol like that, um, but you don't have a problem with the presence of alcohol at your wedding, your wedding, then may the spirits flow. Yeah. There was also there was also wine at Jesus' wedding. There were spirits at his wedding. So so all I'm saying is or the wedding he attended. Huh? The wedding he attended. The, the wedding he attended and turned the water. Yeah, not his wedding yeah. for sure. Um uh uh so so I just I want I just want those factors to be there, and remember, you are leaving and cleaving. This is yours. Yeah, I, I would just one caveat would be maybe, maybe pops come to the wedding and not the reception. There you go. You know. Yeah. Maybe uh, he he come and everybody have a great time, mm-hmm. and you say I do, mm-hmm. and you hug daddy, mm-hmm. and you say I see you after. Yeah. After I get back from the honeymoon. That's great wisdom. My 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 um. My grandfather's brother and sister-in-law, because my granddaddy was deceased when I got married. Mm. But when I tell you, as soon as that DJ went, er, 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 they like, had just finished their chicken. I don't even think they had dessert. They was gone. We out of here. And and Juliet, were, Juliet and I were the last ones to get off the dance floor. <laughs> so we danced all night. My wife is Afro-Caribbean. And um, and so that was basically a soca floor. We was We was on it. Getting that slow wine, <laughs> so I'm all I'm yeah I'm yeah we was yeah, yeah so yeah the people that don't need that don't don't want to be at a reception that has alcohol if that's their conviction then yay and amen yeah yeah all right we got one from Lori so the preacher said to me or to the congregation that if you don't go to church. And if you're comfortable not going to church often, as often as they say, every Sunday, every every Tuesday, whatever else, then that means that you that your um, comfortability equals or equates to your lack of love for God, and it doesn't feel real. But I am curious as to what you might think about that, saying seeing how for this particular person. Your your life in serving God and everything else is all within the corners of the church. And if you step out of that, um, then that means you're not loving God. And I know it's not real, but it I question it because I'm not a preacher, I guess. And I just feel... Um, I, just, I just feel... Uh, confused by this statement you know mm. well i think church is important i don't think it equates to your love for god um i think you know churches plays a, a very important role I, uh jesus loves the church his bride i think the church is not a building also um but i, I believe in the power of community i think uh i think it's very important for you to be surrounded with like-minded people, um, to have a tribe uh, that you're moving forward with. I'm a pastor, so I'm, I'm all things church. But at the same time, uh, yeah, I don't condemn people for not attending church. Folks have soccer games, you know. People have stuff to come up, uh, you know, that maybe they can't get to church. Um, so, you know, I think there's a thin line between conviction um uh, of community and, and making that sacrifice, the Bible says, you know, sacrifice of praise and stuff, make that sacrifice, make that push. I think there's the line between that and and and, and cult like yes, thinking, sir. and you want to you want to be careful. With. Yes, sir. I I um I was I wasn't I didn't have perfect attendance at Embassy City. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I'm, you didn't get that certificate. Yeah, I'm I'm disqualified from answering <laughs> this question. I I wasn't there every Sunday. Right? Every July I was gone. Right. Um, 
the year that I transitioned, I think I think I was I, I think I had been in uh, I was only there half the year. Yeah. In the pulpit, I was only in the pulpit half the year. So so um, like first of all, what does that mean? Like f- like every Sunday, every Tuesday, every time the doors open, you have to be at church. That sounds a bit controlling. That sounds very controlling. That sounds like it has a lot to do. Um, with that person's ego, yeah, and um, potential insecurity, yeah, than it does with like a commandment from scripture, yeah, y- you know, um, forsake not the assembly. I'm a yeah. church guy, yeah, I love the local church. Um, uh, will always be a part of the local church. Um, and I will always, I, I will never be there every Sunday. Yeah, it's just not that's not ever going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so. Rest assured that your salvation is not <laughs> yeah. on the line if you don't have perfect attendance at church. But but I also believe you need to be very leery of someone that makes that a requirement because that sounds like control. Yeah. Yeah. Hope that helps, Lori or Laura. Yeah. You want to keep going or yeah. close up? Are these, are these voice notes on YouTube? These are voice notes they send in our Discord chat. Oh, oh mm-hmm. man, y'all are snazzy. Little, I love that word. We are kind of snazzy. Wow. This is, from, bit, this is from King Waffle. King Waffle. Like, for real, for real, <laughs> what a name. King Waffle is hey, wild. Hey, Pastor Travis, I can't wait to hear this um, voice. My question is about boldness and stepping to who God fully created you to be. Um... I'm walking through a season where everything looks pretty bleak and pretty rough. Um, one of my close friends committed suicide about a month Dang. and a half ago. We've been grieving that for a while. Um, we're starting finals here at college. Mm. Um, been dealing with a lot of social anxiety, feeling like my friends don't really care about me the way that they say they do. Um, and I know it's mostly in my head. Um, I'm having trouble like navigating the dating world because I have a lot of trouble seeing myself in a way where someone would want actually want me. Um, having trouble just like taking the risk and actually stepping out and doing what God called me to do outside of just my normal education. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just I don't know, maybe a word of encouragement um, or something that can help me to you know take that step. Play that again. I need that ram back. That was layered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I hear something in his voice. Hey, Uncle mm. Tim. Hey, Pastor Travis. Um, my question is about boldness and stepping to who God fully created you to be. Um, I'm walking through a season where everything looks pretty bleak and pretty rough. Um, one of my close friends committed suicide about a month and a half ago. We've been grieving that for a while. Um, we're starting finals here at college. Um, been dealing with a lot of social anxiety, feeling like my friends don't really care about me the way that they say they do. Um, and I know it's mostly in my head. Um, I'm having trouble like navigating the dating world because I have a lot of trouble seeing myself in a way where someone would want actually want me. Um, having trouble just like taking the risk and actually stepping out and doing what God called me to do outside of just my normal education. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, maybe a word of encouragement, um, or something that can help me to, you know, take that step. So I could give you a word of encouragement, but I first want to address, um, what I hear in your voice and it's sadness. Mm. Um, there, there are several things that have been heartbreaking, um, Mm. for you and to you. And as a result, it has left you sad. And I first want to acknowledge that that sadness is okay. Um, m- my sense is that you're experiencing this sadness, but you may not be processing it correctly or processing it at all. And it feels trapped because I hear it in your voice. Mm. It feels like that sadness is trapped. I don't know if you've actually brought it to the surface and acknowledged it and actually processed that a close friend committed suicide, took his own life. 
um, that you feel social anxiety around your friends, but you acknowledge that most of it is in your head, Mm -hmm. which means you haven't expressed it to them. That's a dangerous place to be. Mm. Um, And then you got finals coming up and then relationships, uh, you know, around dating. There's a lot of sadness there, bro. Mm. And and you need to you need to acknowledge that, and you need to um, give yourself permission to feel all of it, as opposed to trying to solve it. You just need to feel it. Mm. I wow. don't I don't think you need to like like the Book of Lamentations is a book for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lament is a part of. Mm. Walking with Jesus. Sadness is a part of walking with Jesus. Yeah. Crying is a part of yeah. walking with Jesus. He wept. He wept. So so I, I just don't want to rush to encourage you. Mm. It sounds like this season sucks, bro. Mm. Let it suck. Mm. And invite us to sit in that with you. I don't want to cheer you up. I don't think I'm mm. supposed to. Mm. I just want to sit in the dank darkness of where your soul sits right now Mm. and let you know that, yeah, it's dark in here. You might not even be able to see your hand in front of your face. And you know what? It's okay. Mm. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Mm. For God is with you. He's present even in your sadness. Mm. And it's okay. It's Mm. okay for the for the sky to be gray. Mm. It's okay mm. for it to be raining. It's not the worst day of your life. But it is a bad day. And if you can't say that and you want to just be kickstarted out of that and cheered up, nah, fam. Mm. Taste this. Taste it. Mm. Taste it. You need to know what this tastes like. Mm. You need to know what it's like to serve a God who loves you when your life sucks Mm. and when stuff don't make sense. You just need to, you just need to be in it. Mm. There ain't no cheering you up for today. Sorry. Mm. Not for me. Maybe from, from Travis, if he has something to add, Mm. but not for me. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to sit in it with you. Mm. I'm not. (laughs) And I'm, and maybe this is too fresh for me because I just lost my daddy, but Mm. I, I I wish somebody would try to cheer me up. Mm. And I just lost my my hero. Mm. Ain't no cheering me up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just sit with me. Just be present. Yeah. Don't tell me it's gonna be okay. Please don't give me no scripture. Yeah. Cause I already know it. I miss my daddy. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. I'm sad that he's gone. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Mm. I'm angry on some days that he's gone. Mm. And that is okay. Mm. So you just need to learn to be okay right now. Mm okay with the fact that it's not okay. Mm. And he just gave some context going off of what you were sharing. He said, I'm a, I'm a bit of an overthinker, so I cried when it first happened. But because of my responsibilities, I feel like I just have to keep moving. That, that's, that's what's going to mess you up. Mm. That's what's going to mess you up. Mm. Yeah, you, you can't just keep moving. You, gotta, mm. you, you cannot be afraid to sit in it. Yeah. 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 Can't yeah. be afraid to sit in it, man. If you run from it, yeah. It's it's gonna come out. And when it comes out, it's gonna be messy. Mm. Cause it's gonna come out when you least expect it. Wow. People that do not deal with their grief and don't do their grief work well, mm. they they keep moving until it just comes out. And whenever it comes out, it's never when you want it to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's never when you wanted to, and it's never how you would like it to. Yeah. You've just been holding it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, man. No, you hit it. I mean, that's that's a well of wisdom right there. I, I, I would just, I think my only encouragement would be not to, not to hurt yourself, man. You know? Um, that sometimes when you are sitting in it and you just saw your friend, you know, for whatever reason, escape his pain. Um, you know, for you not to think that that's the easy way out. That's right. 
um, that your life matters, you're necessary, um, and you can sit in it, but remember that it's temporary. That's right. That's it's exactly right. Man. This too shall pass. It's temporary. The weeping is temporary. Um, I, I love what Paul writes. He calls that what he was going through a light and momentary affliction. Now, it doesn't feel like that in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, sure. when you're sitting in it, it feels heavy yep. and it feels eternal. Yeah, it does. But it, it is light it and, is. and the full, you yeah. know. Yeah, the full scope of the things. The sco- full yeah. scope of things is light and it's momentary, it's temporary. Yeah. And and know that you're not alone That's right. when you sit in it. Uh, yesterday, you know, my message was from John 4, the woman at the well. And I read one verse, verse 4. He needed to go through Samaria. Yes, he did. And, um, I think the, one of the beautiful things in that passage is that the woman that no one wanted to walk with, Jesus wanted to sit with. Mm. Um, and he, he he met her and sat at the well and spoke with her yeah. in, in her deep and dark place. And, you know, 2,000 years later, he'll sit with you yes, wherever you are. Will. And the well was made 2,000 years before they got there. It was Jacob's well. That's nice. Jacob dug this well just to provide for his family, not knowing that he was providing for a woman that would need a therapy session 2,000 years later. So there's a place that's been prepared for you to meet with Jesus Mm. before this even happened. Mm. (laughs) Mm. And uh, he'll sit sit with you. Yes, Lord. He'll sit with you. Woo, that's a song in there. Yeah. There's a song in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. A rap song. No. (laughs) No, 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 no. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Not a rap song. It's been no rap song. Yeah, bro. That's dope. All right, a couple more. Do a couple more? Yeah, man. Gucci. Uh, the full name's not coming up on this one, so we'll see. Hey, Uncle Tim. Hey, Pastor Travis. My question is about the gift of speaking in tongues. Ooh. I know religious ways and religious leaders have taught me in my 46 years that everybody should speak in tongues. And when they do, it all sounds alike. But Mm. when I read the Bible and I try my best to break it down, the gift of tongues isn't given to everybody. Like the gift of interpretation of tongues isn't given to everybody. So I have a question on why does religion make us think we're lacking something if we don't? Mm. And when we do have the gift of tongues go forth, why isn't there ever the gift of interpretation in the room as well? I mean, I have a lot of questions on this gift of tongues, but I just like a little bit more understanding on that. So good. I love that. I love that Ooh. somebody asked this question. Come on, dwellers. Yeah. Dwell among us. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first? Or? Oh, man. I actually got to pee. Okay, go ahead. Go pee. Okay, great. I've been drinking uh, tea. All good. He has to go pee because he's drinking tea. So, um... Uh, let's deal with uh, first the gift of tongues. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the the gift of tongues um, and the interpretation of tongues is uh, our spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives, and there there is a lot of um, confusion around. Um, that expression of prayer language versus um, when when the Holy Spirit came and people began to speak in tongues. So this is where Pentecostals start saying that if you don't speak in tongues, then you don't got it or you only got half of it. I went through this when I first gave my life to Jesus. When I first gave my life to Jesus, I didn't speak in tongues for about six months. And I was told that I am I I am not fully saved or my salvation hasn't been sealed because I haven't spoken tongues. That was very frustrating. And the more I started to read the word, I realized that they were capping big because the Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sins. And I was not speaking in tongues, but I sure was being convicted of my sins. So I knew the Holy Spirit was on the was was I was infilled with the Holy Spirit. OK, um, now with the controversy around the evidence of speaking in tongues. 
Woo. I know some people that speak in tongues and they live like demons. Mm. And I know some people that have never uttered a tongue, a, a heavenly language, no, no tongues at all, and have more character and integrity and fruit of the spirit mm. than the persons that even speak in tongues. So um, uh, I'm going to say that up front. The second thing, I, I, I don't even know, what I'm, I, why am I even trying to uh, order this num numerically? Yes, sir. So I am sequential. Sequential. The other thing that I do want to say uh, 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 below that is that um, this is considered to me a non-essential theologically mm -hmm. that people make a um, a fundamental mm. uh, theological thing, and it's not fun. It's not a fundamental foundational thing for me mm -hmm. and to me. So, um, if you speak in tongues, yay. If you don't speak in tongues, yay. Is Jesus Christ Lord and did God raise him from the dead? Mm -hmm. If the answer to that is yes, mm -hmm. then what Paul says is that no man can say that uh, Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about evidence, it would be the fruit and it would be your confession. Mm -hmm. Whether you ever tra la la la, shea ba ba bo, is 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 a moot point. Um, the pressure that that um, most Pentecostals feel to make everybody tongue talkers is a pressure that is uh, man made. Mm. The, mm. I started speaking in tongues at on a Tuesday. Can't make this up. Tuesday morning, two twenty two a.m. Mm. After thanking God for so much stuff in English, I got ready to say my next words. And then this beautiful language just came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I didn't stop for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. My brain didn't cut off. My eyes didn't roll in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. I wasn't shaking violently. There was this beautiful language that started coming out of my mouth. It had, um, it had uh, uh, structure and, and, and syntax. And it had, um, it, it was syllabled. And it was it was definitely language. It was not gibberish, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it was. All I know is that that my spirit was communicating in in a way that I just thought was absolutely beautiful. I I love speaking in tongues. Um. The 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 and then the last thing I'm going to say is, the speaking of tongues that requires an interpretation is a tongue, that, literally takes over a service and everybody interrupts. is inter it interrupts and takes over a service and everybody's drawn to what this person is saying that needs an interpretation mm -hmm. in in our pentecostal expression if somebody is preaching and ha da da ho ha right which i just literally freaked out that that is not a tongue <laughs> i don't know what ha da da ho ha is but if somebody ha da da ho has that doesn't need an interpretation. Yeah. Amen. Now, the cessationists want everything to be interpreted. Yeah. A quickening and, and a, a little, in two syllables, they want, uh, we didn't get an interpretation yeah. for that show, bo bo bo. And it was like, well, that doesn't need an interpretation. That didn't take over the whole service. Yeah. Now, if you go tongue talking for 60 seconds straight, somebody better be giving an interpretation to this. <laughs> I'm confused. Because I need to, we all need to know. <laughs> Um, uh, but a, a, a prayer language and the gift mm -hmm. of tongues are completely different. And wherever you stand on that and settle on that is theologically not at a foundational level, nor should it be something that we think is, uh, 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 a discussion that needs to be anything more than somebody's preference. And I'll shut up. No, I 100% agree. I, um, I'm I'm pro um speaking in tongues. I, I think um it empowers you in a way that you can't really explain. I think it is communication with God. Um I think it is it is helpful, um, but it's not foundational. Correct. I I one hundred percent agree with that. I, I, I the thief on the side of Jesus never spoke in tongues. Um, and neither did my daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think I think there there are several um, examples of that. Uh, 
you know, so yeah, no, no, I, I don't think I have anything to add. I, I think I agree. I, I, I hate the pressure that Pentecostals do put on people. Now, now, come on, come on, come oh on. Oh my God. Say Jesus over and over until it happens. You know, I just think, you know. Dude, I've been in the Tarian, I've been in the revival services That's where, I'm from. where people go down to like a room, like 50 people go down, and it's. Oh yeah. Don't say another word in English. G -G -G -G. It is your mouth. It is his tongue. Open up your mouth and let his tongues out. Yeah. Right? And then after, then they, th th dude, this is so shaming to me. After these 50 people go down to like this room mm -hmm. to, to pray for the spirit, they bring back the people that got it. <laughs> she got it. We got a shot and about so, that. And, and so like 50 people went down, 23 people come back up. Yeah. They all got it. The yeah. others are still working. Yeah. For, on a, to receive a gift. A gift. A gift. They it's working gift. to receive a gift. Imagine you on yeah. Christmas night <laughs> and your kids is like, mommy, mommy, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy, if I can have that little horsey, oh, daddy, if I can have my horsey, daddy, 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 mama, 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 d -d 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 daddy, 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 m -m 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 mama, can I have that horsey? Uh, did I get my PlayStation, mama? Did I get my game, mama? Can I have my game, mama? You'll get that game. You're going to get the game, man, because I'm going to give it to you. Not because but you can you, get it without that. You can get it without. Yeah. So I, I say for me, um, I, think it, I think it's worth desiring. It's a free gift. I think you should. I, I, I don't know if this is proper, but I think you should desire. Um, I, I, my... My personal conviction, yep. right? I'm a church kid, yeah, and I've went through all the terror and stuff. It never happened for me. Me either. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I, I got it like, when I gave up on it. Yeah. I actually said I don't even want it no more. Yeah. I literally said that. Yeah. I mean, so I went to, to college, and then I just got, man, I, I you know, I, I got in the web of, of just perversion and stuff that I always said I wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yo, all right, I need something a little more than hallelujah. Cause it just ain't keeping me. Yeah, and um, you know, so for me, um, it was I just desired. I said, "Yo, if there's more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, like if there's more, yeah, and I'm grateful for the gospels, but man, if there's something in that Acts book that yeah. I can get, yes, like yeah, I wouldn't mind some power. Yes, and so for me, I That's do, good. you know, for a generation, I'm like, man, like don't. Don't deny, you know, the power that's accessible. You, you can want it. Mm -hmm. Don't feel defeated if you haven't received it yet. Absolutely. Um, or maybe you never will. But, yeah. that, you know, I at least that's what I tell my people. I'm like, man, you know, ask, you know, and, and you shall receive. And um, it is it is powerful. It's yeah. beautiful. I love how you described your, your experience. But my wife was saying when she was in the bedroom, I think with her mom, having a bible study mm -hmm. <laughs> the first time yeah speaking in tongues and so um, my best my friend my best friend started speaking in tongues while on the toilet <laughs> there we go he was pooping yeah yeah and literally got yeah. it was flowing both it ways. started it started <laughs> yeah it's flowing both ways yeah amen now yeah. that we definitely and i love i also love what you said that the proof of the Holy Spirit. You know, we use this line, especially in Grubbage, the evidence, the evidence. Yeah, the evidence. The, yeah, the evidence Man, is a changed I, yeah, life. Yeah, fam. Yeah, the evidence the ev is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the proof of the Spirit. Yeah. You can talk like heaven and live like hell. That's exactly right. So, I, I mean, I watched these Pentecostals yeah. for three and a half years run laps talking about we got it, and you was mad at the person at Luby's. Yeah. Like, you was mad a beef patty wasn't available. Yeah, yeah. You're still mean. You're still mean. Amen. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, Clarion, Clarion said the way she got it was that Tarian way. She was like, "Is that wrong?" No, it's not. No, it's no, not no, wrong. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you, you the Lord, the, listen, you, you, the Lord is 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 moving through all of us, even at our most ignorant, operating at our most yeah. ignorant, operating at our most clueless. He's still present. Yeah, and what Tim was saying is not that that doesn't work. No, it's just, just saying it it's may not, not required. Be, yeah, yeah, it's not required. Yeah. And, to and, get it. Yeah, and for so these, just because you got it like that, don't mean your child had to get it the same way. That's what we do, though. We make we make a monument or we make right. a tradition out of something, and it's like 
yo, okay, it worked for you. Right. But that doesn't mean it's going to work That's for you. That's absolutely you know, correct. The next yeah. generation. That's absolutely so, correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's not in the Bible. No. No. <laughs> That's not Tarian. Where? What verse? Yeah. It's not there. Though they tarry. They weren't talking about. They weren't talking <laughs> about that. They weren't. I mean, it's, wait. It's something that Noah has desired. Uh, we're talking about uh, speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's something that Still. Noah has desired, and it hasn't happened yet. 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 Yeah. I believe because he desires it, it will happen one yeah. day. But he's like, he's like, yeah, I I, I want that. Yeah. And, he, and he's, so it's, it's, it's dope. It's dope. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I love I just love these questions that you Me love too, man. But now we're hungry. Look at the time. I love the dwellers. Yeah. I hey, thank y'all for having me. Can I come back? You can come How back about whenever that? you want. You can come back whenever you want. Like literally, you can come back whenever you want. I love this, man. Yeah, yeah. This is like this is literally what we do. This feels great. Yeah. It feels very home. Yeah, yeah, bro. Well, that I'm glad I'm grateful. Like this, like for me, man, um, what I love about our dweller community is just think about the conversation. Just think about the questions we were just asked. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the life of a believer. Yeah. Some of it is theological. Some of it is just like, should my parents come to my wedding if we're yeah. going to serve alcohol? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I'm feeling sad because, you know, my best, not my best friend, but a dear friend of mine killed himself. And yeah. then, you got all this other stuff going on, and it's like, that's we. we the Bible has to apply to Monday through Saturday. Yes, yes. We, we just can't keep telling people read a verse. Yes, and not help people like apply it to their life. I love it's that. It's black, white, and red, and our lives are lived out in shades of gray. Mm. How do we apply it to those gray areas? Wow. And 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 this is what this space is for. Wow. This ain't a Bible study. This ain't a devotional. I'm grateful for for everybody's role in the podcast space that are believers and what they feel like they add. Mm. But we out here. I love it. We out here talking to real people about real things, about yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. it's Gucci. Do you want to live stream y'all's reaction to the solar eclipse going outside together? Um. Oh, the solar eclipse is going. <laughs> hey, I'm, this is going to be wild. <laughs> I hope this is not. Like a is. bummer. There it is. I don't care. Yeah, I, I'm about these chicken tacos. Yeah, I, I, if I, you're not coming back right now, then I don't care. Yeah, like I'm gonna somebody's gonna because I can YouTube it, bro. You are my bro. <laughs> and it probably looks better on YouTube. I'm about to go outside <laughs> and put on some special glasses and look up. <laughs> I'm at, what? Oh. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they just brought up glasses. We, we, about to, we about to share a bunch of <laughs> glasses, glasses and go outside and look up. I, l- listen, I'm not <laughs> mad at anybody that wants to see it. All I'm saying is like... <laughs> there are millions that have come to Dallas for this. Is it better in Dallas or something? I don't know. It's, Apparently. it's uh, going through Texas. Path where people is what they're talking about. I'm sorry? The path of the path of totality. Yeah. That sounds biblical. There's a lot of conspiracies I don't care. about the end times, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if God I mean, didn't come well, back in the year 2000. Listen, what everybody up, what everybody needs to look up and notice. Why 2K was it? Here's what everybody That's needs the last to, time I got scared. Here, here's what I will say. If you don't believe that there's an intelligent designer behind the fact that a total eclipse could be seen from this planet, and those two other fears are so perfectly aligned and sized that one can block out the other and you still think of a Big Bang did that Ooh. instead of a person saying, let there be? Child, please. Mm. So you go look up. I know who did that. Mm. My father did that. Mm. Just so y'all know. The creator of both heaven and earth. He's the one put that eclipse up there. Y'all put your glasses on and go watch that. But I know what my daddy can do. Total what? Total alignment? What you called it? Total the, the path of totality. The path, path of, of totality. totality. Yeah, that's the path weird. of totality runs through Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He shined by the Yes, Lord Jesus. So there, there daddy, it is. Daddy, 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 please, can I get a horse? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I know who the totality, the path of totality path runs of totality. through. Totality. It runs through Christ, who is the open door. Path he is the good shepherd. Door. 
Uh, yeah. That's who it is. So y'all looking up. I'm glad that y'all looking up into the heavens right now. Mm. But you don't have to look to the heavens if you don't want to meet the creator mm. and see his glorious design. So y'all go ahead and look up. But you better acknowledge when you look up, there's a God up there. That's right. Shoot. Path to totality. The path to totality. Someone's going to clip this. They can clip it. Pastor Tim co-signs end times. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say nothing about no end times. Uh, look up. <laughs> there's a state of emergency in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, just because of the eclipse. What's the emergency? What, what's what, to too many people? Mm. But but here it's going just to, uh, totally black. Oh, cool. Ooh. Well, well then I won't need to look up. That's biblical. It's going to be nighttime outside. Is that what we saying? That's, That's going to really be cool. nighttime. Yes. Okay, great. For how long? Three or four minutes. Three or four minutes. It's going to get dark for three or four minutes. No, child, please. It's nighttime. Is that what happened when he when I'm he got go up? Kissed Julia I mean, when he died. Four minutes. <laughs> Is that what happened when Jesus died? I'm going to go tongue up my wife for, fu oh my for five God. minutes. Oh, my God. That's better than looking up. Amen. <laughs> Where down. my wife at? I'm, a, I'm out. Uh, love y'all. Bye. Yeah, so press B with me. And let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh, yeah, so press B with me. And let's let whatever gon' be just be.